One Punch Man is coming back after five entire years. Although, let's be real, it felt way longer. Seems like just about every other anime has had multiple arcs since the last season of OPM, even as the webcomic and manga of the aforementioned series continue semi-regularly. But let's not get too caught up in the details. More One Punch Man is always a good thing. And even though we don't have a confirmed release date yet, we should probably be preparing for the return. So today we're going to do a complete One Punch Man recap, all in one go. Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, only 25% of our viewers are subscribed, so if you're a fan of the video, please like and double check if you're subscribed. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Saitama Introduction Arc The story begins with the dragon level threat monster Vaccine Man destroying a city while Saitama watches the event take place on TV, deciding to intervene. As Vaccine Man is about to kill an innocent child, Saitama shows up to save the child and tells Vaccine Man that he is a hero for fun. Vaccine Man transforms and prepares to fight Saitama, but is easily killed in a single punch. Saitama then gets on the ground, proclaiming that he was upset by how easy that was. We then flash back to when Saitama encountered the monster Crablante, who was after a young child that drew nipples on his shell. Saitama killed Crablante to save the child and afterwards started training to become a hero. Back to the present, Saitama is shopping at a grocery store. However, he's interrupted by the Brain and Brawn brothers rampaging. He swiftly defeats them, but accidentally destroys B-City in the process. While in his apartment, Saitama is attacked by the Subterraneans who give him his first real fight in three years, but as he's about to face off against their leader, it's revealed to just be a dream. After the real Subterraneans invade the surface, Saitama accidentally kills the Subterranean King, and they retreat. House of Evolution Arc while at his home, Saitama thinks about how his emotions are slowly dulling because of his overwhelming power when a mosquito starts to annoy him. Saitama then finds out on the news that a mosquito outbreak is ongoing in Z-City. Outside, Mosquito Girl is controlling masses of mosquitoes and wreaking havoc. Genos arrives, saying that he will eliminate her. As Mosquito Girl is about to transform, Saitama rushes into the battlefield to interrupt their fight. Genos starts struggling immensely as Mosquito Girl is ripping off parts of his cyborg body, but Saitama slaps her away, saving Genos in the process. After seeing Saitama's strength, Genos begs Saitama to make him his disciple. Saitama reluctantly agrees. Later, Genos visits Saitama's apartment and shares his tragic backstory with him, and begs Saitama to teach him how to become strong. Suddenly, Kamakuri bursts through the roof, only to instantly get whacked by Saitama. Saitama and Genos go outside to deal with Frogman and Sluggerus, but they're split up when Genos is forced to deal with Armored Gorilla. Saitama kills Beast King and Ground Dragon, and Genos starts interrogating Armored Gorilla after defeating him. Using the info they got from Armored Gorilla, Saitama and Genos arrive four hours later at the House of Evolution HQ. Genos blows up his surroundings to find an entrance. While walking through a hall, Genos gets smashed by the House of Evolution's strongest specimen, Carnage Kabuto. Carnage Kabuto challenges Saitama to a fight, but just before it's about to start, Genos returns and fights Carnage Kabuto instead. However, he is utterly defeated. Saitama then prepares to take on Carnage Kabuto, while Dr. Genus, the leader of the House of Evolution, thinks to himself that Saitama doesn't stand a chance. Carnage Kabuto attacks first, but hesitates, thinking that if he completed his move, he would have been killed. Saitama, after getting asked by Carnage Kabuto, explains to everyone how he got so incredibly strong, but nobody believes him, including Genos. This only angers Carnage Kabuto as he enters Carnage Mode and unleashes a barrage of different attacks onto an unaffected Saitama. Saitama realizes he's about to miss a sail and kills Carnage Kabuto in one punch so he can make it in time. Dr. Genus and Genos are stunned. Paradise Group Arc Hammerhead gives a speech about how work should only be for those who like it. They decide to destroy the home of multi-millionaire Zeniru to make their point heard. Moomin Rider attempts to stop their progress but fails. Meanwhile, Saitama sees a report about the Paradise Group and how every member is bald. To prevent people from associating him with the terrorists, Saitama decides to take care of the problem. Speedo Sound Sonic, a private mercenary shinobi hired by Zeniru, confronts the Paradisers and kills every member save Hammerhead. A brief scuffle ensues between the terrorist and the ninja. Sonic defeats Hammerhead, but the terrorist escapes. Saitama, now in the woods in pursuit of the Paradisers, runs into Hammerhead. The terrorist attempts to kill Saitama, but the hero punches back and destroys his armor. Saitama lets him leave and tells him to be good. Hammerhead flees. A short while later, two individuals of the organization knock Hammerhead to the ground and mock his stupidity in stealing the suits. Speedo Sound Sonic arrives and asks Saitama where Hammerhead went. Sonic attacks Saitama twice, but Saitama stops both of the attacks. He explains that he isn't a member of the Paradise Group, but is instead a hero, but Sonic doesn't believe him. 
Sonic jumps around Saitama and shows off his speed, but Saitama follows his movements. Surprised, Sonic attacks Saitama, but his momentum carries his crotch onto Saitama's fist. He jumps back and declares Saitama his eternal rival. Back in his apartment, Genos tells Saitama about the National Superhero Registry. The two decide to register. National Superhero Registry Arc At the National Superhero Registry exam, Saitama is passing the physical exams without any trouble, amazing the other contestants with his immeasurable speed, endurance, and arm and leg strength, breaking every superhero record in the process. In the locker room, Saitama meets up with Genos. They agree that the tests were a walk in the park, and Genos adds that the written test was especially easy and thus the fitness test would be the deciding one. One hour later, they get their results, with Genos perfectly scoring everything, 100 points, and being ranked an S-Class superhero. Saitama, however, only got 71, ranking as a C-Class. He aced the fitness test, but barely managed to pass the written one. They're both summoned to a seminar for the passing candidates. At the meeting hall, they're greeted by Snek, who congratulates them and gives them a lecture as to what being a superhero is all about. He's irritated by Saitama's nonchalance and yells that they should learn from him to become fine superheroes. Still annoyed by Saitama's dull look, Snek implies that he can make sure that Saitama loses his rank. Saitama, as always, is completely and utterly uninterested. On their way home, Genos seems happy about them attaining a superhero rank, figuring that this makes him Saitama's official disciple. Saitama is worried about this and regrets making Genos his disciple. Back at the office of the Hero Association, Snek complains about the two new superheroes to Jinzuren. He says that they will probably both quit their job soon, but his partner disagrees, saying that Genos is already S-Class, above Snek, and that both recruits got full points on the fitness test. He further presses that Saitama broke every fitness record and that he may surpass Snek in no time. Meanwhile, walking on the riverside, Saitama is thinking about the superhero ranks and revises his opinion about Genos, reasoning that he may actually be pretty impressive. However, he thinks to himself that Genos is not the kind of superhero Saitama wants to be. Suddenly, he's cut off by Snek, who takes a fighting stance in front of him. He declares that he will fight Saitama because he is a promising newbie, a thing common in the industry. He initiates his hand-to-hand -hand combat technique and connects with Saitama's face, though after a brief off-screen conflict, Snek's torso is seen buried in the ground with his legs sticking out and Saitama walking away. Genos is checking his and Saitama's new rankings in the Hero Registry, claiming they'd been both put in the lowest rank of the S-Class and C-Class. After a brief discussion, it turns out that the two have gone to a quarry to spar. Genos asks Saitama to take the spar seriously and then takes a stance. He holds out an arm, which opens up to reveal multiple cannons, which surprises Saitama. Genos fires a massive beam towards Saitama and then launches himself after the beam. Saitama easily sidesteps the beam and gets caught by Genos, which causes the two of them to go flying into the wall of the quarry, shortly followed by the beam. Genos then moves along the side of the wall of the quarry, throwing a flurry of punches until he notices that Saitama isn't there and he'd been attacking Saitama's afterimage the entire time. After realizing he hadn't actually been attacking Saitama, Genos scans for him and locates him jogging away across the floor of the quarry and launches himself after him. Genos lands in front of Saitama and puts his hands together, both of which open up and launch a massive blast. Genos thinks he'd managed to get Saitama, but Saitama pats Genos' shoulder and then pokes him on the cheek. Genos then throws a punch at Saitama, who dodges, and he accuses him of not taking the spar seriously. At this point, Saitama gets rather close to Genos, who attempts to kick at him, but Saitama dodges behind Genos and throws a punch, stopping just before Genos' face, and flicking him on the forehead instead. As Saitama walks away, Genos looks behind him to see a massive dust cloud caused by Saitama's punch. Five days after their debut as pro heroes, Genos asks Saitama if he can live with him. Saitama protests until Genos offers to pay rent and throws a rather large stack of bills onto the table. Afterwards, Saitama is relaxing and Genos is taking notes on everything Saitama does in hopes to learn the secrets of his power. Saitama starts to think of ways to get Genos out, but is interrupted by Genos who tells him that C-Class heroes get expelled from the organization if they've been inactive for more than a week. Saitama had not known this and rushes out of the apartment to find a crime to solve. Saitama rushes all throughout town but doesn't find anything and gives up. The next day, he does the same thing and is freaking out about being expelled when he catches a kunai that was thrown at him by Speedo Sound Sonic, whose name he'd forgotten. Sonic tells Saitama that this time he shall finally kill him, but before he's able to finish his sentence, Saitama tells him he's busy and cannot fight him at this time. Leaving, Saitama irritates Sonic and thus provokes him to attack him with his sword, which the latter then shatters with his mouth, much to Sonic's surprise. Saitama, who was already kind of annoyed by his unsuccessful search for heroic deeds to do, tells Sonic to back off or else he'll punch him. The two are then spotted by a girl who tells someone that one of them is a suspicious person. That person then reveals himself to be the C-Class Rank 6 hero, Tank Top Tiger. Hearing that he's a hero, Saitama is convinced that he came to stop Sonic for attacking him out of nowhere. 
However, Tank Top Tiger reveals his target was Saitama, who was walking around town with a suspicious look on his face since the day before. Hearing that he's the one that they were talking about, Saitama tells Tank Top Tiger that he's a pro hero like him. Tank Top Tiger then tells him that he's never heard of a hero that looks like him, to which Saitama answers that he is a newcomer. Tank Top Tiger does not care and tells him to go back where he came from for he is bothering people, which is bad for the hero's reputation. Tank Top Tiger then prompts Saitama to fight him if he does not leave. Tiger's then recognized as being in the top 10 of C-Class. He's then hit by Sonic's exploding shuriken and knocked out, which terrifies the people around, causing them all to run. Saitama, worried for the fallen hero, talks to Sonic about his attack, and then he replies that he only put Tank Top Tiger to sleep as he got in their way. The civilians terrified of Sonic are running around and calling for someone to help, which causes Sonic to tell Saitama that since he is also a hero, that he'll create a situation for the latter to fight him. Sonic then goes behind Saitama and in the air, throwing more exploding shuriken, to which the hero prepares but is shocked to learn they were not aimed at him. Sonic was actually throwing his slaughtering mayhem formation at the surrounding area, causing havoc. A lot of damage is done and people seem terrified. Saitama tells Sonic to stop but he does not listen, telling Saitama that if he won't fight him then he shall continue with this destructive way. Saitama then saves a child from a falling car by bending a tree over him and annoyed that everyone seems to get in his way which he has no time for because he needs to find a bad guy to beat down. Saitama then notices the havoc that Sonic has caused and hits the ladder to the ground, saying that he hopes that this act takes care of his weekly quota. Rumored Monster Arc The Hero Association staff are having a meeting, discussing reports from various cities. The Association sends Spring Mustachio and Golden Ball to investigate rumors about the abandoned section of Z-City. They encounter Kombu Infinity who defeats them. The monster informs them that it isn't the rumored monster but seeks to become the monster for fun. It encounters Saitama, who steals its kombu hair to make soup. Genos believes Saitama is trying to regrow his hair with the kombu, but Saitama firmly denies it. Giant Meteor Arc Genos reads out the news that Saitama went from last to 342nd place. Saitama is not impressed by this and asks what Genos has been doing. Genos explains that he ranked 17th, but is 6th in popular votes, much to Saitama's shock. Genos reads, without embarrassment, some commentaries from others who wrote their impressions after looking at one picture of him. Despite that, Genos exclaims that he has yet to meet someone as astounding as his teacher, to which Saitama is creeped out about. While they're talking, miles above them near Earth, a giant meteor is on an impact route. Genos is called to go to the Hero Association for some unknown reason. He arrives at the Z-City branch with a suitcase where he meets Bang. Genos recognizes Bang as the third-ranked S-Class hero. Bang explains that everyone from the Hero Association evacuated, as all S-Class heroes were called to go there, and there were only two remaining. Genos wonders why, which Bang continues to explain that everyone is preoccupied or didn't bother since they were ordered by the Hero Association for an unreasonable dragon-level disaster task. Bang was ordered to stop the impact of the meteor which could wipe out Z-City, and by protecting the people from the meteor it will make the Hero Association's name rise. However, Bang claims that it's impossible and advises Genos to evacuate. Genos still stays and asks if the citizens were informed. Bang explains that half an hour ago they tried to estimate the point of impact and will announce an evacuation notice. Despite that, Bang shows a fearless expression of the coming panic. The alarm signals and Genos wonders what Bang is going to do. Bang is going to stay and protect his dojo with his water stream rock smashing fist. As he turns around, he notices Genos has already left the building. Above them, the meteor destroys a satellite near orbit, heading closer to the Earth. The warning signal to evacuate shocked the citizens and they're left without hope. Genos leaps from rooftops and notes that the meteor will also destroy the outskirts of Z-City. He decides to test his prototype and activates his suitcase which shows the words arms mode. He throws the suitcase into the air which forms into a pair of arms and attaches to his arms. He then lands on a rooftop nearby the point of impact. He wonders if he can do some damage with his incineration cannons and hopes to protect his teacher. As he prepares himself, a huge robot flies above him towards the point of impact. The mechanical robot flies toward a building and lands on it. Genos approaches the robot and wonders if it's Bofoy. Genos pleads for Bofoy's assistance in destroying the meter, but Bofoy refuses, stating that the only reason he's there is to test out a new weapon system. Bofoy then goes on to reveal that what Genos is talking to is just a remote-controlled robot, and that his real body is a safe distance away from the imminent impact site, and he'd rather be called by his hero name, Metal Knight. At that point, the meteor roars closer, and Genos jumps off to another building. Calculating the points of impact, Bofoy lets off a volley of large missiles which hit the meteor, cause a large explosion, but don't stop it at all. Genos' mind starts racing about how to destroy the meteor when Bang shows up and calms him down. A picture of Saitama runs through Genos' head as he rips his hoodie off and opens the chest plate, revealing a core, which he then pulls out and attaches to the bicep of his left arm. He then tells Bang to get down and launches a massive attack at the meteor. 
Genos' attack proves to be too little to stop the meteor, and he drains himself of energy and falls to the ground. At this point, Saitama shows up and asks Bang to take care of Genos, and then promptly launches himself headlong toward the meteor. He quickly arrives at it and punches himself through it, the meteor cracking up and exploding in his wake. The pieces then start to rain down on Z-City, destroying a bunch of buildings, including the one that Genos and Bang are on. Saitama then lands, looks around, and nonchalantly walks away. Three days after the meteor incident, Saitama and Genos are relaxing in their apartment watching the news about the devastation the meteor fragments caused. Genos states that if the Hero Association had asked Saitama to help in the first place, then the damage could have been reduced. After a brief discussion, Genos reveals that the incident raised their hero rankings. Saitama went from Class C rank 342 to rank 5, and Genos went from Class S rank 17 to rank 16, and even Bofoy went up in rank from S Class rank 7 to rank 6. Saitama is severely shocked by the jump in his position. After a brief discussion about disaster levels, Saitama decides to go for a walk. As Saitama is walking around Z-City, taking note of the destruction, he's accosted by Tank Top Tiger. Tiger accuses Saitama of taking credit for the meteor incident, which he did not deserve. Saitama blows off these accusations, which angers Tiger, who then calls out his brother. Tank Top Black Hole then makes his entrance, and the two brothers accuse Saitama of cheating. Saitama seems rather put off by this and asks the two what they plan on doing about it. Tiger starts to threaten Saitama with violence, but is cut off by his brother, who states that he knows the cruelest way to punish Saitama. Black Hole then takes a deep breath, and in an extremely loud voice, he starts calling out Saitama, saying that he's to blame for the destruction of the town. As he goes on like this, citizens from the area start to gather on the group. Eventually, some of the citizens start to join in. At that point, Black Hole calls on Saitama to resign, which the citizens agree to. As this is happening, Bang is watching nearby from the roof of a building. He expresses his disappointment in the citizens and states that he'd rather see Saitama resign from the Hero Association than to see him corrupted by it. At this point, Black Hole goes to make his decisive move. He acts shocked and pretends that Saitama made a move to start attacking citizens. He and Tiger then step forward and state that they will protect the citizens by taking Saitama down. At this point, Bang leaves, stating he'd rather not watch a public execution. Tank Top Tiger then steps forward and challenges Saitama first. He charges forward only to be casually knocked off into the distance by Saitama. Black Hole, enraged by this, jumps forward and grabs Saitama's hands, only to fall to his knees due to the pain of having his hands crushed by Saitama. He starts apologizing profusely, stating that he lied and that he gives up. Saitama interrupts him at this point, saying to everyone in the area that it was, in fact, his fault that the destruction happened, and if anyone had a problem with it, then they should say it to his face. Someone tries to interrupt, but Saitama cuts him off, stating that he's not a hero for the people's admiration. He does it because he feels like it. Several days later, a mysterious being is seen waking up from the ocean. Sea Monster Arc A large mysterious being rises from the sea and begins to terrorize the nearby city. It declares itself to be one of the sea folk, and that humans are to surrender the surface to them at once. His rampage is short-lived as Saitama arrives on the scene and dispatches him quickly. Later on, a large wave crashes to shore, bringing with it more sea folk who then head into the city and start to attack. A citizen is grabbed by one of the sea folk, but is quickly saved by the A-class hero Stinger, who then challenges the rest of the sea folk to battle. The scene changes to Saitama and Genos relaxing in their apartment. Genos is seen doing dishes and commenting on their recent rises in rank, stating that Saitama soon could be moved up to B-class, and mentions that the current one rank C-class hero has been in his position for more than half a year. At this point, Genos receives a call from the Hero Association stating that the sea folk had attacked J-City. He mentions this to Saitama, who then turns on the news to check on the situation. The news shows a battered stinger still facing off against the sea folk. Saitama, now serious, believes they need to get there as fast as possible. An exhausted and battered stinger stands before several large sea folk. They tell him to give up, that all his supporters had left, and that he was going to die there. Stinger blows off these jabs and states that now he is by himself, he can go all out. One of the sea folk sends an attack at Stinger, who meets it with an attack of his own that blasts a hole through the sea folk. Leaping through the hole, he uses another attack and dispatches the last three sea folk. He lands and starts to celebrate his victory, only to be immediately taken out by the Deep Sea King. A city alarm announces that the disaster level of the Sea Folk invasion has been raised to Demon. In addition, the citizens are advised to evacuate the city. The Deep Sea King continues to walk through the city. Lightning Max is seen observing the Sea King from afar. The Deep Sea King then suddenly appears behind Lightning Max and their fight initiates. During the fight, Max is overwhelmed and he ends up losing. Puri Puri Prisoner comes in time to save Lightning Max from being crushed by a building. It's revealed that Speedo Sound Sonic has followed Puri Puri Prisoner, and Sonic thanks him for allowing him to escape. Puri Puri Prisoner becomes excited to fight the Deep Sea King after sensing the King's strong aura. The two then begin fighting while Sonic observes. Puri Puri Prisoner ends up taking a lot of damage and resorts to using his Angel-style transformation. 
However, this proves to not be enough as the Sea King is still able to beat Puri Puri Prisoner. After Sonic and the Deep Sea King have a small chat, they begin fighting. During their fight, it begins to rain. Sonic's speed seems to be too much for the Deep Sea King. Sonic's fight with the Deep Sea King continues, but the Sea King gets a noticeable speed, strength, and size boost. Sweet Mask is briefly seen on television. He tells the interviewer a little bit about his ideology about what a hero is in his mind. The Deep Sea King is later seen chasing Sonic and is able to grab him. However, Sonic was able to slip through, leaving his clothes behind. Sonic then tells the Deep Sea King that the next time they meet, it will be the Sea King's last. Sonic bumps into Genos while on his way to get his weapons. Before Sonic leaves, he tries to belittle Genos' hero career. Afterwards, the Deep Sea King decides to go to one of the shelters. He's able to effortlessly make a hole in one of the walls of the shelter. Before he can attack the people inside, the C-Class hero All Black Man interrupts him. The B-Class hero Jet Nice Guy and the C-Class hero Bun Bun Man and A-Class hero Snack all follow All Black Man's lead soon after. Moomin Rider just arrives at Jay City and is talking on the phone with the Hero Association. He's told to rush to the emergency center. As Moomin Rider rides off to the shelter, he drops his phone. Saitama ends up picking up the phone and talks to one of the Hero Association assistants. The assistant is initially reluctant to tell Saitama where the monster is, but after looking over his record, he changes his mind. The heroes at the emergency shelter are quickly defeated by the Deep Sea King. However, Genos soon arrives and starts fighting with the Deep Sea King. Genos launches the Deep Sea King out of the emergency shelter, but also creates another large hole. Unfortunately, the Deep Sea King immediately recovers from Genos' punch and retaliates by attacking Genos when he was distracted by the crowd. The Deep Sea King is able to rip off Genos' arm and knock him towards a wall. Genos tells everyone to get out of the shelter while he holds off the king. During their battle, one of the children cheers on Genos, which annoys the Deep Sea King, who spits some acid at the child. Genos is just barely able to get in front of the spit in time, preventing it from harming the child. As Genos' body melts due to the Sea King's acidic saliva, Deep Sea King grabs Genos and throws him at the wall of the shelter and proceeds to punch him through the wall out into the rain. He expresses his surprise at the fact that Genos sacrificed himself to save a little girl. Just as he's about to deal the finishing blow, Moomin Rider attacks him from behind with his Justice Crash by literally throwing his bicycle at the Sea King. As Genos attempts to stop Moomin Rider, he attacks the Sea King but is easily parried and smashed to the ground a few times before being thrown away. Deep Sea King then returns to finish off Genos, but Moomin Rider intervenes again by grabbing him from behind. Moomin Rider admits that he knows better than anyone that he has no chance of beating the Sea King. However, he states that it does not matter if he stands a chance or not. He has to fight him since there is no one else who will. This causes the people to start cheering for him and he gets pumped up, but he's knocked out by the Sea King with a punch to his face. Saitama suddenly appears at the scene and grabs Moomin Rider before he falls to the ground. Saitama praises Moomin Rider's fight and sets him on the ground, and he spots Genos lying there and is surprised that he's still alive, despite his melted state. He then tells Genos to wait a little longer as he takes care of the Sea Freak. Sea King, who is now transformed into his true form, tells Saitama that he can hear him and punches him in the back of the head. Saitama, however, appears to be unaffected. A care package is dropped by Saitama's home. Inside, the care package is a bunch of letters from various people. Almost all of the letters for Genos are positive, while the majority for Saitama are negative. Genos starts to feel very angry for the lack of appreciation that Saitama is given for the near countless lives he has saved. Although Saitama simply shrugs the hatred off, Genos feels deep regret for showing Saitama the letters. However, Saitama eventually receives a thank you letter. Saitama is called in by the Hero Association to congratulate him for becoming rank 1 in C-Class. Saitama is brought into an interview to ask him whether he wants to remain in C-Class or move up to B-Class. Saitama decides to move up to B-Class and is given a psychoanalysis test. Overhead of the interview, there are several Hero Association staff observing and discussing Saitama. They discuss whether or not he's a sham. After a short discussion, Sweet Mask is seen as an advisor on whether or not Saitama should move up. Sweet Mask replies that they do not need him for such a trivial task as promoting someone to B-Class. Sweet Mask additionally states that he only wants a say in promoting people to Class A and higher, as they tend to have a strong influence on the association's image. After the interview, Saitama goes to a nearby food stand to eat. There he finds Moomin Rider, and it's revealed that he was the one who wrote the thank you letter to Saitama. The two share a smile and order Mozuku. Alien Conqueror's Arc Bang is shown demonstrating his technique, Water Stream Rock Smashing Fist to Saitama and Genos. He asks if they'd like to give the technique a try. Unfortunately, they decline Bang's offer. Chiranko is angered by their decline and challenges to fight them. Genos quickly defeats Chiranko and states that he was underwhelmed by the lack of skilled fighters in Bang's dojo. Bang explains that his dojo used to be full of skilled disciples, but they were all disabled by Gero, Bang's best disciple from the past. Bang further tells them that he expelled Gero after giving him a beating. 
Saitama acknowledges Bang's strength, a statement which Taranko would then scorn Saitama because of his lack of knowledge of Bang's popularity. After Taranko's constant talk, a Hero Association employee arrives at Bang's front door, informing Bang and the others that an emergency summons has been issued to S-Class heroes. Bang, Saitama, and Genos leave for the meeting while Chiranko is left to watch over the dojo. At the headquarters, they're greeted by Atomic Samurai. Atomic Samurai declines Saitama's offer for a handshake, stating that he'll greet him once he becomes an S-Class hero. Tatsumaki suddenly starts shouting at Saitama and belittling him, only to have Genos inform Saitama that she's rank 2 in the S-Class and is an Esper. At the meeting, each S-Class member gives off their thoughts on the matter. Saitama asks for tea. Sitch enters the meeting room and introduces himself. Before explaining the situation, he warns them that once they start listening to what he has to say, they will be confined to the room until the meeting is over. Metal Bat interrupts Sitch, stating that he had to skip his sister's piano concert to attend this meeting, and threatens to destroy the headquarters building if Sitch does not have anything important to say. Sitch announces that the great prophet Shibabawa is dead. Most of the heroes are shocked to hear this news. Zombie Man asks whether she was murdered, which Sitch replies that she just died from choking on cough drops. Super Alloy Darkshine asserts that the Hero Association brought them to tell them that they must now prevent disasters without Shibabawa's help. Sitch states that Darkshine is wrong, and that she's always only predicted a fraction of all disasters. Saitama asks Puri Puri Prisoner who Shibabawa is. Puri Puri Prisoner tells Saitama that she was a great prophet that could predict the exact timing of disasters, such as natural disasters and monster attacks. Finally, Sitch states that the real problem was that her final prophecy was a note saying that the Earth is in trouble. Child Emperor then tries to make an excuse to leave. However, he's only mocked by Sitch, who states that Child Emperor is nothing more than a child if he does not comprehend the danger of this matter. Additionally, Sitch further states that the disaster is above Dragon and will happen within half a year. Watchdog Man comments that they cannot do much to prevent the disaster. Saitama remarks that the prophecy might come true sooner than expected. Suddenly, the headquarters come under fire from Sky Folk. Outside, the Sky King prepares to attack with his henchmen. However, the Sky Folk are then attacked by an unseen being. A large craft is then seen flying over a city, where it stops and proceeds to destroy the entire city. Sky King is then seen dead, his body falling apart as a large creature with several heads and wings comments to itself on killing the Sky King, and the destruction caused by the ship. Eion, an A-class hero, then crawls out of the rubble and witnesses the state of destruction in a city. The only thing left standing is the Hero Association headquarters. He then notices the giant ship above him, but only looks for a second before the large monster appears behind him and attempts to crush his head. He manages to evade the attack as the monster only crushes his helmet, its occupant having moved safely away. Eion comments on how there would be no way that he would not notice the monster's killing intent and then proceeds to attack it. Sitch is screaming, and after seeing that a city was destroyed in an instant, he is certain that the Earth is in danger prophecy had come true. Bang asks Sitch why the Hero Association building is still standing, to which he answered with the fact that Metal Knight had built it, and that it is much stronger than an average shelter. Metal Bat then notices that because it's built like a bomb shelter, the place has no windows. The heroes prepare to leave to deal with the threat outside, and just as Genos is about to ask Saitama to join them, he notices that his master is not there, and that a hole in the impenetrable fortress ceiling has been made, apparently all the way to its roof. Saitama is then seen on the roof, preparing to deal with the threat in front of him, a giant spaceship. Saitama leaps toward the spaceship and is shot with a colossal-sized bullet, but he dodges. He's relieved due to the fact that if the weapon was a laser beam, it would have burned off his clothes. Saitama is once again shot with gigantic bullets, but he repels them and sends them back to their own ship. Meanwhile, Iayan is still fighting the alien Melzargard, who appears invulnerable to his attacks. The alien then retaliates and demolishes the area behind Iayan as well as his left arm. The alien then proceeds to split himself into five different forms. The creatures then proceed to split themselves into more individuals and proceed to attack Eion. However, they're stopped by Atomic Samurai, who shows concern for Eion's injuries. The creature regenerates, and Atomic Samurai engages it in a fight. Once it seems that Atomic Samurai has gained the upper hand, the individuals combine to form one single entity, who seems to be excited at the prospect of someone that can match them in power. Bang, Metal Bat, and Puri Puri Prisoner arrive to aid Atomic Samurai as they take on Melzargard. S-Class heroes are then seen debating on how to deal with the flying ship, Super Alloy Darkshine suggests King take on the ship, to which King replies that he's unable to do so. Hearing this angers Tatsumaki, who then decides to stop the ship by herself. Saitama is then seen having already boarded the ship in an altercation with Groribas, who is easily defeated in one punch before even given the chance to attack. He then decides to destroy the ship from the inside, much to the dismay of Geryugenshup, who is shocked by the power Saitama possesses. Boros then appears and is shocked after learning of Groribas' defeat. 
As the S-Class heroes battle the monster, Melzargard was struck by Bang and decides to contact the ship to prepare the cannons. He creates a small flying head to contact the ship, but the head was struck by Metal Bat. Garyugenshoop then contacts Melzargard to inform him that someone has intruded. Metal Bat, Bang, Puri Puri Prisoner, and Atomic Samurai continue their battle with Melzargard. Eian suggests retreating, but the heroes refuse to listen. Melzargard is then contacted by Garyugenshoop, asking him to return to the ship to deal with Saitama, but he's preoccupied with the S-Class heroes. Metal Bat then discovers his core, which is his weakness, and proceeds to smash it, taking out one of the heads. Saitama is exploring the ship when he hears Garyugenshoop's voice via telepathy, who tries to direct him out of the ship. Saitama follows the opposite of his orders and ends up confronting Boros in his chambers. Garyugenshoop then appears and attempts to fight Saitama using telekinesis. Garyugenshoop enters a fight with Saitama and hurls a rock at him. Unaffected, Saitama retaliates by throwing a rock back at him with enough force to split his head in two. Boros, who has observed the fight, is impressed and explains that he's traveled through the entire universe because a prophet told him about someone who would give him an enjoyable fight. Saitama then punches Boros in the stomach, scolding him about rampaging on other planets. Boros miraculously survives, but his armor that seals his strength is broken, and he begins a new transformation. The Dark Matter Gunner focuses the ship's cannons in order to support Malzargard against the S-Class heroes, but just when the missiles were about to hit the ground, Tatsumaki stops them mid-air. Tatsumaki stops the missiles, saving the S-Class heroes, and she sends them back at the ship, damaging it to the distress of Malzargard. The S-Class heroes then gain the advantage over Malzargard when Bang finds another one of his cores. Melzargard then hits back at Bang. The fight between Saitama and Boros continues, with both individuals acknowledging each other's strength. Tank Top Master then tries to help Tatsumaki by throwing a piece of a building at the ship, but ends up getting caught in her own psychic attack against it. The crew of the ship worries about their fate due to the attack. Genos, Drive Knight, and Child Emperor watch as Tatsumaki attacks the ship. Drive Knight decides he's not needed and leaves, but not before giving a warning to Genos about Metal Knight. Melzargard grows to a larger size, gloating about how he's defeated Bang and threatening the other S-Class heroes. Bang proceeds to get up, looking unhurt and shocking Melzargard, who is then attacked by Atomic Samurai and finally defeated by Bang. Saitama and Boros continue their fight, with Boros appearing to gain an upper hand, firing a laser from his chest, and then striking Saitama from behind. He seemingly believes that Saitama took damage from his attack and explains about his home planet being almost inhospitable, and how they've adapted regenerative powers to survive. Saitama seems to ignore Boros' story and asks if he's done with the fight. Boros gets mad and unleashes his meteoric burst and begins attacking Saitama. Due to his powerful kick, Saitama is sent to the moon. Saitama realizes that Boros was taking the fight seriously, so he decides to take it a little seriously too. Saitama jumps back to the ship from the moon, and due to its powerful impact, the ship takes heavy damage. Upon seeing Saitama, Boros becomes even more excited and attacks him violently, only for the hero to be unfazed and retaliate against him with a punch that temporarily knocks him back. Saitama immediately follows using his consecutive normal punches on Boros, tearing him to pieces. Boros releases his powerful trump card, collapsing star roaring cannon. With the blast about to bring an end to humanity, Saitama decides to use his trump card against the threat, the serious punch, cancelling Boros' final attack and ultimately defeating him. Saitama realizes that Boros is still conscious and acknowledges him as a powerful opponent. However, while slowly dying, Boros can tell that Saitama was lying, as throughout the entire fight he never used his full power against him. Boros dies, commenting on Saitama's incredible strength as the hero takes his leave. The spaceship crashes into Earth, forcing all of the S-Class heroes to escape and completely leaving a city in ruins. Sweet Mask appears to demand a reason for the city's state, when the S-Class heroes explain that they dealt with the situation. Sweet Mask says they should have done a better job, which leads to an altercation between Metal Bat and Sweet Mask. Suddenly, Metal Knight appears to the surprise of the heroes. When Genos questions his appearance, it's revealed that he appeared with the intention of using the alien technology for weapons that are needed for the sake of peace. Super Alloy Darkshine appears finding alien survivors from the crash, but they're afterwards slaughtered by Sweet Mask, to everyone's surprise. He explains that he killed them because they had no right to live because they are evil. Saitama appears from the wreckage of the ship, surprising both Tatsumaki and Super Alloy Darkshine. Genos goes to check on Saitama, who explains about his fight with Boros, ignoring Tatsumaki. Tatsumaki is angered about being ignored and starts to verbally abuse Saitama. Genos responds by calling Tatsumaki a brat, who violently slams him into debris with telekinesis. As she soon also threatens Saitama, Bang calms her down, saying that she must be more conscious of her rank. The Hero Association HQ was rebuilt as an iron fortress. The spaceship was retrieved by Metal Knight and moved elsewhere. King Ark In the street, there's a lizard monster named Tongue Stretcher who frightens the citizens around him and as men are unable to subdue him. However, his work has been stopped when the S-Class Rank 7 hero King appeared. 
King just stared at Tongue Stretcher until he automatically surrendered due to his fear of being killed as well as being overwhelmed by his King engine. Everyone was cheering on King after defeating the monster. As King walks silently holding his new game, Saitama and Geno see him. A news alert was announced about the monster. A robot monster had shown up in front of King and introduces himself as G4, a machine created by the organization, and he was told that King is his primary target. He challenged him to a battle, but King told him that he needs to go to the bathroom to fight at 100%. G4 gives him about 10 minutes to prepare, and if King didn't show up, he'd slaughter 10 citizens every minute afterwards, with Saitama and Genos observing the monster. As G4 is waiting for battle, King starts to panic. Truthfully speaking, he admits that he's a coward and a weak person. He was proclaimed without his notice as the strongest person in the world because of a big misunderstanding. When he closed his eyes, someone killed the monster he had encountered, thus he was given an S-Class title. As King struggles in his own crisis, he decided to run away, apologizing to the citizens. Genos begins to fight G4. Because the fight between the two will take a little longer, Genos asks Saitama to go without him. Saitama just told him not to lose to G4. When King has finally arrived at his home, he immediately prepared his console games. While in the middle of playing, Saitama showed up without his notice. Saitama told him that he went in through his open window. He asked him why he didn't show up to fight G4 as Genos is fighting in his stead. Saitama discovered that King likes games rather than fights. Also, Saitama has guessed that he is also just bored. Meanwhile, Genos is fighting the robot and managed to melt it from the inside. The robot collapses only to reveal its true form and it begins to attack him. As Saitama is going to leave, a disaster alert level demon was announced. The giant crow crashed into the building where King lives. With just one arm, Saitama stopped it while King was panicking behind him. Meanwhile, Genos had been fighting with the original version of the enemy. He devises a plan to trap the robot. Genos tells G4 that he is stronger and he's about to defeat him. During the aftermath of King and Saitama's encounter with the giant crow, a teary-eyed king tells Saitama his secret. All the rumors about his strength and fighting history were a lie. He simultaneously realizes it was Saitama that he had taken credit from. Fortunately for King, Saitama is apathetic toward the whole situation and leaves King's apartment. Gero Introduction Arc Genos returns to Dr. Kuseno with parts from G4, asking him to use them to make him stronger, to which the doctor is amazed and eventually agrees. However, Dr. Kuseno is still worried about Genos and asks him not to go too far, to which Genos replies that he's not and he's still within his limit, even telling the doctor the goal Saitama set for him. Worrying for Genos' safety, the doctor asks to meet with Saitama. The doctor then checks to see if Genos is still after his original goal of finding the cyborg that destroyed his hometown, to which Genos replies that he is and has not yet found a clue. He shows that he's still determined as ever to destroy said evil. Dr. Kuseno sees Genos' high-strung attitude and tells him he's concerned about him, telling him not to act rash and to call him before confronting the evil cyborg, telling him he's not alone in that fight, to which Genos agrees. Meanwhile, at the Hero Association headquarters, Sitch has gathered all the villains and criminals, telling them it's not a trap and is not about their criminal activities. He tells them to ignore the three heroes behind him, A-Class Rank 5 Heavy Tank Fondoshi, A-Class Rank 6 Blue Fire, and A-Class Rank 7 Magic Trick Man as they're just his bodyguards, which causes the criminals to get a bit ambitious. The heroes are concerned about what the reason could be for said gathering of criminals, but are still bracing themselves, while Sitch, knowing of the strength of said heroes, thinking it would be foolish to attack. Just when Sitch was about to hand out papers to the criminals, a voice is heard, asking about the whereabouts of the hero Saitama, thinking that he lives in said facility. Hearing Saitama is not there, the voice claims he has no reason to stay, which irritates Blue Fire. Said voice is revealed to be Speedo Sound Sonic, who throws all pamphlets in the air, much to Sitch's surprise, for he had not handed them out yet. Sonic talks about the reason for said gathering, which was to bring all help possible to protect the Earth, to which he refuses, claiming he is not interested. Sonic is leaving after the meeting. After hearing of the real reason for the gathering, Bluefire is angered and confronts Sitch, asking him if it was true, to which Sitch tells him it was since it's a dire time and everyone must now work together to save the Earth. Sitch then proceeds to talk of the number of heroes currently in the Hero Association and claims them not to be enough. Sitch says that because of the criminal's strength that can rival some heroes, they're here and that if they can help, they will be rewarded. Fundoshi mocks the idea, which provokes one of the criminals, who taunts him. Fundoshi then pummels the criminal into the ground. A man is shouting and talks about the prophecy, claiming it's about him, provoking everyone to attack him, and he reveals himself to be Gero. Gero is excitedly yelling at the other criminals to fight, since it's the only reason he came to see which is the strongest. Sitch rejected the idea and tells Gero to leave the facility. Gero later changes his mind and decides to conduct evil. Sitch advises his bodyguards to deal with him, to which they agree. 
Gero then reminisces about his days as a child, where he watched a show about Justice Man and was rooting for the villains. He later found out that justice always prevails and decided that he will become the strongest monster ever to attempt to change that scenario while choking Magic Trick Man. Heavy Tank Loincloth attacks Gero in an attempt to save Magic Trick Man, but Gero manages to break his arm and knocks him out with a single punch. The criminals cheer on Gero only for him to state that they will die too. As the criminals defend themselves, stating that they're not on the hero's side, Gero simply replies that he isn't on the human side, but is rather on the monster's side. Blue Fire agrees with this statement and tries to burn Gero with one of his attacks only for Gero to rip off his arm. While Sitch calls for backup, the criminals attack Gero. Outside, Sonic is leaving the Hero Association headquarters. He heard a commotion coming from the headquarters but simply brushes it off, since he already wasted his time for not finding Saitama and declaring that one day he will defeat him. In the meantime, Saitama is playing a game with King and complains about always losing. At the headquarters, Gero managed to beat every single criminal and declared a war against the heroes. He declares in half a year he will become stronger and challenge King, the strongest man on Earth, leaving Sitch cowering in the corner. The Blizzard Group Arc Three figures enter the isolated area in Z City. They're revealed to be the top three ranked B-class heroes, Fubuki, Eyelashes, and Mountain Ape, respectively, who are moving toward their target. Meanwhile, at Saitama's house, Genos reveals that the two have been promoted to B-Class Rank 7, Saitama, and S-Class Rank 14, Genos. And although Saitama neglected to report his work, it was still reported by eyewitnesses, which causes Genos to believe his master is finally being recognized. Genos senses an object coming in at abnormal speed and rushes outside, trying not to disturb Saitama. The object is revealed to be Speedo Sound Sonic, who recognizes Genos from their previous meeting. Sonic then claims he came to battle Saitama as his rival, which angers Genos, causing both to prompt each other into a fight. At the same time, Saitama overwrites save data on King's handheld gaming console, which he took from King's apartment. 20 minutes later, the three B-class heroes are outside of Saitama's door, with eyelashes yelling at him to come out. Blizzard of Hell introduces herself to Saitama, but Saitama is not impressed. She then tells him of the factions in the Hero Association and threatens him to work under her. Saitama refuses, which causes both Eyelashes and Mountain Ape to attack, but the two are then swiftly defeated. After Saitama defeated her subordinates, Fubuki uses her psychic powers, but Saitama is not surprised by her abilities. She uses a technique called Hellstorm, which leaves her opponent's bones cracked and flesh ripped apart, but Saitama managed to get behind her and patronized her on being a hero. Fubuki was angered by his statement and used a barrage of different techniques, all of which were ineffective against Saitama. She tearfully attacks Saitama with a box cutter, but was caught up in Genos' and Sonic's attack. She manages to evade it only because Saitama came in between the explosion. She meets Genos and was surprised at the fact that he was Saitama's disciple. Sonic threw an exploding shuriken at Genos, but the attack was ineffective. Sonic comes down from atop the streetlight, boasting that he shall beat Genos and Saitama shall be next. Meanwhile, Fubuki notices his killing intent and claims him to be dangerous. Genos tells Saitama that he shall beat Sonic, to which Sonic is amused as he claims Genos to be slow. Genos then responds that he did not show what he is truly capable of. Genos then accelerates himself and quickly moves behind Sonic, unsuccessfully attacking yet again because Sonic manages to catch on and dodge. Saitama and Fubuki witness the match, and while Saitama notices Genos moving faster than he did while they fight, hypothesizing that he got new parts, Fubuki is unable to keep up with the speed of the two. After a bit of fighting, Sonic notices that Genos keeps getting behind him, thinking that he's mocking his speed. Genos then drops Sonic's topknot, leaving him with short hair, which angers Sonic. Genos gets behind Sonic and attacks with his machine gun blow technique, only to be surprised to learn that he only hit an afterimage. Sonic then retaliates with his secret technique, Foreshadow's Burial Scattered Flash Slash, which Genos cannot follow. This prompts Genos to blow up the entire area, going at maximum power. Afterward, as Sonic is thought to have beaten Genos, he realizes Genos had fallen before he was able to cut him. Learning Saitama was responsible, he calls him soft for wanting to protect his pupil, to which Saitama replies it was to prevent Genos from destroying the place since they live in the vicinity. Saitama then tells Genos to stop his fight as he himself was Sonic's target. He then states that he shall take on Sonic seriously. Sonic states he shall use the ultimate technique he developed in order to kill Saitama. Meanwhile, Fubuki is watching the entire fight and is glad she's being ignored, otherwise she might have been in danger. Sonic attacks Saitama with his ultimate technique, Ten Shadows Burial, to which both Genos and Fubuki are impressed but are still capable of seeing. He does not have the upper hand and Saitama counters with his own move, Serious Series, Serious Side Hops, creating an infinite amount of clones and beating Sonic. Sonic then appears to be knocked out, to which Genos resembles death, but Sonic managed to instantly leave. Fubuki, seeing everything, claims Saitama to be too strong. Fubuki explains the reason why she stays in B-Class is that she'll never reach the top of the ranks like her sister Tatsumaki. As such, when she became B-Class, she took control of the lower heroes in order to surpass her sister who was a lone wolf. 
Jeno's comments that she could be at the top of A-Class, but Fubuki states that it's impossible because she'll never be rank 1. She explains that Atomic Samurai's three disciples, Bushi Drill, Okama Itachi, and Iayan, are unable to get to S-Class because of Sweet Mask, who is securing rank 1. Meanwhile, Supon, a caveman who escaped from a nearby lab, is causing havoc in the streets, and Sweet Mask is ordered to bring it back alive. The caveman hisses at him, but Sweet Mask comments that he isn't that sweet. Supon attacks Sweet Mask, but he easily dodges and counterattacks the caveman, killing him instantly with the crowd cheering him on. At Saitama's apartment, Fubuki tells Saitama that he might be a monster himself, but nowhere near Sweet Mask or Tatsumaki. Fubuki tries to justify her actions, though Saitama has nothing against it, he just doesn't feel like being her henchman. Moments later, much to Fubuki's shock and awe, King arrives, asking for his game. Saitama returns the game, admitting he accidentally erased King's data. Fubuki, surprised at how S-Class heroes are attracted by Saitama's strength, begins thinking about joining the others. At the Hero Association meeting, Saitama and Genos are given hero names. Genos is named Demon Cyborg, while Saitama is simply named Caped Baldi. Sitch is furious about the meeting, debating names rather than about Garo's rampage. They explained Bang volunteered to get rid of Garo, and there is King, Tatsumaki, and Blast if all else fails. Meanwhile, Garo coincidentally ran into Tank Top Vegetarian and defeats him, but was not satisfied by the fight. He happily announces his hero hunt and couldn't wait to fight S-Class heroes. Hero Hunt Arc Bang beats down Charanko, expelling him from the dojo. As Chiranko talks to the Saitama group about his master's recent actions, Genos then tells Chiranko that Bang was probably expelling him to protect him from Gero, who he's after. Meanwhile, somewhere along a road, Gero confronts Moomin Rider, who he came to hunt, and then he's found by the Tank Topper army. As he's about to attack them all, he's stopped by none other than Tank Top Master, who tackles him, but Gero still stands, causing Tank Top Master to feel uneasy. At a dojo, Bang prepares with his older brother to take on Gero. Tank Top Master continues to fight. While battling and holding an edge over Gero, Tank Top Master has a somewhat fishy and familiar feeling about Gero, having his instincts tell him to finish him off because of Gero's villainous aura. This continues until Moomin Rider stops him from finishing Gero because Moomin Rider believes Gero has already taken enough of a beating. Although his brothers disagree, Tank Top Master agrees and allows Licenseless Rider to tell Gero not to hunt heroes again. However, Gero chooses not to stop, stating his plan hasn't changed a bit. This leads to Tank Top Master attacking Gero again, but this time Gero decides not to hold back. No longer holding back, he manages to easily subdue Tank Top Master with his techniques. Afterwards, Gero reveals his identity to Tank Top Master. Tank Top Master and Moomin Rider attempt to stop Gero from brutally injuring Tank Top Master's disciples. Unfortunately, they are no match against Gero's water stream rock smashing fist. Tank Top Master's disciples attempt to stop Gero on their own, but are easily beaten down as a result. Chiranko appears at the final moment in a pitiful attempt to stop Gero. Bang and Bomb arrive after the mayhem is over, and Bang feels deep resentment after seeing a beat up Chiranko. Red Nose talks to Studless and Hyotoko, ridiculing Tank Top Master for losing to Gero and boasting on how he could beat Gero himself. Gero then appears behind him. Meanwhile, in the Hero Association Hospital, Saitama has come in to give Moomin Rider a visit. While he's there, Saitama is told about Gero from both Moomin Rider and Tank Top Master. A while later, Red Nose and his comrades were found beaten up in the streets. In the park, Gero asks a kid about information about heroes. In the hospital, Tank Top Master continues to tell Saitama about Gero and how dangerous he is due to his techniques. Hearing that Gero is going after the strongest heroes, Saitama is sure he'll be next, although no one knows how strong he is, which Moomin Rider is aware of. Leaving the room he was in, Saitama goes to visit Charanko. Saitama tells him he pities him for being dragged into a fight, and after a false assumption, Saitama changes the subject. Saitama tells Charanko he wants to face strong martial artists, and when Charanko bores him, causing him to leave, Charanko then stops him and tells him of the Super Fight Tournament. As Saitama was told that the ticket was under Charanko's name, and that he should not pretend to be him to get in, Saitama cannot stop but look at the sum of the prize money and ignore him. At night, in the Venomous Bug Tavern, Gero challenges Golden Ball, and after an unnecessary crude act on Gero's side, the two leave to fight in the nearby alleyway. As they walk through the alleyway, the seemingly drunk Golden Ball attacks Gero, trying to beat him quickly. Surprised that Gero can avoid his attacks, Golden Ball uses a ricocheting attack much to Gero's surprise. After the hit, Gero tells Golden Ball he was lucky and that he will not get a second chance. Golden Ball, however, tells him he has many bullets left and continues to fire almost all of them at once. Gero evades every single bullet. Worried, Golden Ball fires his last bullet at Gero, which Gero redirects into another currently flying bullet and then continues to redirect all the other bullets. Before Gero gets to Golden Ball, Spring Mustachio appears and intervenes, claiming that he was worried due to the fact that they were supposed to be drinking together in the nearby restaurant. Spring Mustachio attacks Gero and Gero proceeds to jump in the air. Spring Mustachio then uses his A La Tomboy on Gero, but Gero lets the sword pierce his hand and he attacks Spring Mustachio, knocking him out. Golden Ball then warns Gero, but Gero just taunts him. 
At the entertainment district, Zymeet is seen walking down the street with two ladies, trying to promote the Hero Association. He asks for a kiss from the ladies when suddenly Garo appears and punches him, knocking him unconscious. Garo, however, felt dissatisfied from beating him up. Saitama then appears behind Garo, leading him to the conclusion that a hero has decided to hunt him. He strikes Saitama near the shoulder, angering Saitama who retaliates using the same move on Garo, thus knocking him out. As it turns out, Saitama was actually looking for a wig and not the hero hunter. The next day, Garo wakes up on a pile of garbage with a fuzzy memory. Back at Saitama's home, Saitama tries on the new wig. Genos finds out about this and calls Dr. Kuseno, immediately asking to give Saitama hair transplants. Saitama was actually going to use the wig as a disguise for the martial arts tournament he was going to attend and invites Genos to come along. Monster Raid Arc The Hero Association staff members begin to discuss about the threat that Garo poses and how he recently began attacking staff members. The association agrees to assign heroes to protect his cadres when they're in public. Garo is seen in a shack with a wall of photos of heroes he possibly wants to fight. The Hero Association begins assigning heroes to their new assignments by calling King, but he declines the request, replying that he's already very busy fighting a monster when in reality he's just playing a video game. Afterwards, Metal Bat is seen paired with protecting Narinki, a sponsor, and his son Waganma at the Mouse Sushi Restaurant in S-City. It's revealed that, unlike King, Metal Bat wasn't given a choice. Waganma begins trying out the different foods at the restaurant, but he constantly puts the dishes back, even when Metal Bat tells him not to. This cycle slowly starts to frustrate Metal Bat until his sister calls. She asks him to help her with her shopping bags, but he declines because of his mission. His sister ends the call crying, and Metal Bat makes a remark saying that he should be the one crying. Suddenly, a rumbling occurs, and Metal Bat rushes back to the sponsor. Junior Centipede and Venus Mantrap emerge from the ground and grab Waganma. The pair of monsters appears to be looking for Narinki because of his connection to the Hero Association. Before the pair can leave, Metal Bat prepares to fight them. Back at the Sea City Super Stadium, Saitama attempts to sign in. Saitama is in Charanko's waiting room looking over a list of the contestants in the tournament. He's greeted by a man who seems to know Charanko. The man turns out to be Sourface, and he discusses a tournament incident that happened in the past, when Gero decided to win the martial arts tournament under the identity of Wolfman. Sourface also elaborates that he wishes to win the tournament so that he will never be intimidated if he ever faces Bang or Gero in the future. Furthermore, he talks about the day when Gero rampaged through the dojo. Saitama implicitly states that what Sourface is doing is pitiful. Sourface leads the waiting room feeling aggravated. Metal Bat has just finished his fight with Junior Centipede and Venus Mantrap. Narinki and Waganma are delighted and wish to celebrate. However, Junior Centipede was still alive. He questioned Metal Bat about how high the hero is in the food chain. Before Metal Bat could finish Junior Centipede off, Senior Centipede erupted from the ground. Senior Centipede forced Metal Bat, the sponsor, and the sponsor's child out of the restaurant. Outside, Raffle Sidon emerged from the ground and started releasing gases to knock people out. Gero is with Terio near the outside city of S-City. Terio informs Gero about Watchdog Man's whereabouts and routine. Suddenly, the city announces a disaster level of demon and that Metal Bat is busy fighting monsters. Gero decides to pay Metal Bat a visit. Metal Bat is fighting Senior Centipede and Raffle Sidon. Metal Bat and the two monsters seem to be fighting on equal ground until Raffle Sidon begins releasing gases, causing Metal Bat to enter a drunken state unable to fully control his movements. Senior Centipede takes the opportunity to injure Metal Bat. However, Metal Bat is able to eventually escape the state by damaging his own head, an action that surprises the two monsters. Senior Centipede decides to go for a finishing blow, but Metal Bat detaches Senior Centipede's arm. Metal Bat then proceeds to defeat the two monsters with a single strike each. After defeating the demon-level monsters, B and C-class heroes Pineapple and Mohawk arrive on the scene. Metal Bat asks them to bring the Hero Association sponsor and the sponsor's son to a hospital so he could finally help his sister with her shopping bags. However, Elder Centipede emerges from the ground. The lower class heroes inform Metal Bat about the monster, stating that it previously wiped out a town and is marked as a dragon level threat. Metal Bat tells the other two heroes to grab the sponsor and the child and run, while he prepares to go all out. Metal Bat is deciding how to handle the situation when suddenly Elder Centipede attempts to get to the Hero Association sponsors. Metal Bat manages to intercept Elder Centipede. However, his swing fails to deal any damage to the enormous monster due to its super hard carapace. Elder Centipede launches Metal Bat into a building. Metal Bat jumps onto Elder Centipede while Elder Centipede is chasing after two heroes to get the Hero Association sponsor. Before Elder Centipede is able to reach them, Metal Bat unleashes an attack on its head. Elder Centipede then tries to shake Metal Bat off by maneuvering around the city. Gero finally arrives to the scene just when Metal Bat is launched hundreds of meters across the city. Initially believing the hero has been defeated by Elder Centipede, Gero decides to leave for Watchdog Man. However, Metal Bat soon gets up and begins heading back to fight Elder Centipede. This causes Gero to attack Metal Bat. 
At the Hero Association, the staff members are considering how to handle the monster. Just as Mohican and Pineapple were courted, Metal Knight appears and draws attention away from them. Bofoy asks them to leave as he tests his new weapons. However, as the two heroes leave, they encounter three more monsters. These monsters also demand the sponsors. In another part of town, Metal Bat and Garo fight it out. Metal Bat and Garo continue back and forth, with Metal Bat launching towards Garo with an attack and Garo managing to dodge it. Garo is surprised by Metal Bat's persistence despite his numerous injuries. However, Garo still believes that Metal Bat is at his limit. Much to Garo's surprise, Metal Bat's attack speed and damage suddenly increase, and Garo's attacks are no longer able to phase him. Garo throws a manhole cover at Metal Bat, which Metal Bat hits back. However, Garo already managed to reach Metal Bat by this time that he followed through. Metal Bat tries to take on the offensive, but none of his attacks connect. Garo continues to mock Metal Bat, asking him if he's going to persist until he dies. Metal Bat retorts by saying that he'll fight until he wins and proceeds to initiate a killing move. Unfortunately, Garo manages to repel the attack and launches a blow to Metal Bat's chest, leaving him laying on the ground. Abruptly, someone shouts, Big Brother! Metal Bat is about to land a devastating blow on Garo, but he manages to stop when he hears his sister's voice. Finding an opening, Garo hits Metal Bat to the ground. Before the two could clash again, Zenko, Metal Bat's sister, manages to get between them. She tells Garo the fight is over because Metal Bat promised not to fight in front of her. Garo seems to be annoyed by them, but still decides to leave to find Watchdog Man. While Garo is leaving, Phoenix Man and Sludge Jellyfish discuss how they could use him to their advantage. Metal Bat and Zenko discuss how Zenko found him. Before Zenko could finish explaining, Metal Bat remembers that Elder Centipede is still on the loose. He tries to make his way towards the monster while his sister tries desperately to stop him. Eventually, she gets frustrated and smacks Metal Bat on the back of his head, causing him to pass out, having already endured heavy injuries from both the Centipede and Garo. Phoenix Man realizes that this is the best opportunity to attack Metal Bat, but Sludge Jellyfish was already ways ahead of him. Sludge Jellyfish emerges from the sewers and thought aloud that he plans to kidnap Metal Bat's sister. Suddenly, Garo appears behind the monster and launches a deadly attack. Garo tells the monster that he hates being observed. Phoenix Man joins in on the conversation and attempts to invite Garo into the Monster Association. Unfortunately, Garo rudely declines by ripping up the invitation card and tells them to get lost. Sludge Jellyfish feels very offended by this act but decides not to become aggressive. Phoenix Man laughs off Garo's behavior and tells him that he will overlook this act. Before leaving, Phoenix Man states that if Garo continues hero hunting, then they will definitely meet again, with Sludge Jellyfish remarking that he will not forget what Garo did to him. After the monster's departure, Garo simply expresses his frustration. Pineapple and Mohican are frantically fighting against Rhino Wrestler, but to no avail. Rhino Wrestler is utterly bored by the hero's pathetic attacks and decides to rate them. He boasts about his training towards his opponents and expresses his utter disappointment in the heroes he's facing. Phoenix Man alerts Rhino Wrestler that it's time to leave and to take the hostages. In addition, he reminds Rhino Wrestler that today is not the main event, so they can't do as they please. Finally, Phoenix Man tells Rhino Wrestler to only take the sun. Mohican and Pineapple make a final desperate attempt to stop Rhino Wrestler, but they fail miserably as he's able to charge right through them. Afterwards, Phoenix Man alerts Elder Centipede that they have gotten what they came for. Elder Centipede then grabs Phoenix Man and Rhino Wrestler and leaves in a hole he created earlier. Metal Knight's robot quickly grabs onto Elder Centipede while the monster is leaving. In W City, Heavy Kong has been struggling against Martial Gorilla for 15 minutes. In D City, Lightning Genji is fighting against Electric Catfish Man and Mycoplasma. Meanwhile, many of the other cities are all simultaneously attacked by monsters ranked Demon and above. The opening ceremony for the martial arts competition has started and Saitama is finally ready. Genos is waiting in the crowds to get into the Sea City Super Stadium. The Super Fight announcer introduces all of the martial arts contestants in the Super Fight tournament to the audience. Bakuzan desires to beat and possibly kill Suiryu, a five-time champion of the tournament. However, Suiryu only desires to fight the previous tournament's winner, Garo. Meanwhile, Garo has finally reached the Watchdog Plaza and is planning to fight Watchdog Man. Saitama converses with Sourface when Zakos appears and starts questioning Saitama. Sourface ends up answering some of Zakos' questions. Zakos then reveals that Bang was supposed to be one of the judges and starts mocking the martial arts master. Sourface starts to feel insulted but felt even angrier when Choranko did not seem angry at Zakos' comments. Saitama replies that he was not invested in the conversation and is only looking forward to fighting Zakos, but notes that Zakos doesn't seem strong. Bang and Bomb continue their search for Garo. Bomb notices that one of their marked A-class heroes is being attacked and the two martial artists rush to the scene. Smile Man is struggling against Fistfight Jin. Fistfight Jin boasts about his power before fighting Bang, but before he could finish talking, Bang unleashes his anger through a barrage of attacks, breaking every bone in the monster's body. He tells Bomb to continue searching for Gero before Gero becomes a monster. 
Lin Lin and Lightning Max are about to fight at the tournament, while Darkness Blade, Dynamite Man, Saturn Man, and Panda Man are fighting Doe S. Doe S manages to bring three of the heroes under her control and command them to fight Dynamite Man. Before they can deal too much damage, the Blizzard group arrives, knocking out Darkness Blade and preparing to fight Doe S. Doe S is about to attack the Blizzard group, but Fubuki manages to stop it before it hit. The two engage in banter before initiating their fight. At the tournament, Lightning Max manages to beat Lin Lin. Sourface explains to Saitama, disguised as Taranko, what a reversed seed is, and inadvertently Saitama then provokes Akos. At W City, Marshall Gorilla has defeated Heavy Kong. Lightning Genji continues his fight with Electric Catfish Man in D City. In D City, Lightning Genji is pushed back by the two mysterious beings he's fighting, and while trying to strategically retreat and get help, he is stopped and sucker punched into a nearby vending machine. Meanwhile, in Eyes City, Hundred Eyes Octopus is devouring a building when it's attacked by three heroes, Death Gatling, Butterfly DX, and Bone, who unsuccessfully try to hit its blind spot and are then shortly defeated. In Y City, Eyesight continues to wreak havoc by paralyzing all opposing heroes. Due to all of this, the Hero Association HQ is in disarray. In V City, Pure Blood claims that the Monster Association has made a miscalculation, saying that they have underestimated themselves and overestimated the humans. Back at the tournament, Saitama has beaten Zakos with a single slap, much to Suryu's attention. The audience is excited as Suryu enters the stage. Lightning Max tries picturing him as the Sea King so he can overcome his real goal. Lightning Max tells Suryu that his strength is minuscule compared to the Sea King's. When the match begins, Lightning Max charges at Suryu. Lightning Max shows off his new move but gets easily outmaneuvered. Suryu proceeds to kick Lightning Max to the edge of the ring, knocking Max out. Everyone except Saitama and Bakuzan are impressed by Suryu's performance. He apologizes to Lightning Max for being too strong. The fight between Snek and Benpatsu begins. The Super Fight staff members are contacted that monsters have appeared nearby. The staff decide to evacuate the tournament, but Bakuzan goes against that decision, stating that it would only cause chaos. In addition, he suggests that he will take care of any monster that comes in. Genos receives several alerts about the monsters as well and decides to take care of them by himself. Snek rather easily defeats Benpatsu. Meanwhile, Genos defeats several monsters throughout Sea City. Genos contacts the Sea Branch of the Hero Association. The Hero Association staff inform Genos of seven monsters that have appeared in Sea City and their location. During the match between Volten and Bazuzu, Volten easily wins. Genos continues to take out the monsters as the tournament continues. During the tournament, Gatlin beats Hamukichi, Dave beats Rosie, Chose beats Mentai, and Sourface beats Jokomen. Genos eventually encounters Face Ripper before the monster is able to kill a civilian. Face Ripper manages to chip away parts of Genos' arm, but Genos ultimately catches the monster off guard and is able to land a fatal blow. Genos contacts the Hero Association for the location of the final monster in Sea City, which leads him to an alley. He finds awakened cockroach and several beaten heroes. Meanwhile, Saitama prepares to fight Bakuzan. Bakuzan walks up to Saitama when the match begins, puzzled by Saitama's lack of movement. When Saitama asks Bakuzan for a taste of his martial arts, Bakuzan accepts. However, as Bakuzan is demonstrating his martial arts to Saitama, he accidentally shifts Saitama's wig, causing Saitama to panic and launch Bakuzan into the air with one punch. Everyone is shocked by the sudden attack. Suryu is impressed by Saitama's display and states that he will end his next match in one hit too. Terio is frightened by the monster reports from the news, especially by the fact that the hero patrolling his city, Lightning Genji, is defeated. At the Hero Association headquarters in A-City, the staff discuss how to handle the situation and are incredibly anxious about not having enough heroes. Meanwhile, Awakened Cockroach and Genos continue to duke it out, wreaking havoc across Sea City. Genos and Awakened Cockroach continue to fight, but Awakened Cockroach has the upper hand. Genos decides to use the instant adhesive to trap the monster. However, before Genos could kill the monster, Awakened Cockroach sacrificed his feet to get away. Furthermore, before Genos could make up his mind about returning to the stadio, another being rushes to Genos. Meanwhile, Fubuki is struggling against Does. All of Fubuki's subordinates have turned into love slaves. While Fubuki tries to hold off Does's love slaves, Does's whip eventually manages to pierce through Fubuki's telekinesis and hit her. Does manages to hit an injured Fubuki multiple times. Believing that she has Fubuki's mind under her control, Does approaches her and tells the hero about her plans to lure Tatsumaki out. Enraged, Fubuki sends Does flying back. Before Does could get a hold of the situation, Fubuki uses Hellstorm, which slightly injures Does. As it turns out, Fubuki did not succumb to the monster's mind control. Does changes her plans and decides to kill Fubuki instead of using the hero to lure Tatsumaki out. Fubuki tells the monster that her sister would come anyway. Tatsumaki causes an explosion in the city where Does and Fubuki are fighting. Does realizes the mistake she's made and immediately tries to come up with an escape plan. A monster falls in front of Does asking for help and warns her of Tatsumaki. 
Tatsumaki finally arrives and immediately tells Fubuki to go home and that she will handle the rest. Do-S orders her love slaves to attack Tatsumaki as a distraction while she escapes. Tatsumaki immobilizes all of the love slaves and tells Fubuki that they will only get in her way and to not call them her allies. She then takes off to find the rest of the monsters. Super Fight Arc Suryu and Snack face off. Snack reminisces about his career as a hero. He wonders whether heroes are truly necessary as Suryu dodges his attacks. Suryu and Snack have a short discussion during the fight. During their fight, Sweet Mask's concert is interrupted by monsters, and monsters attack the hospital Tank Top Master and Moomin Rider are staying at and Smelly Lid Prison. Suryu tells Snack that the strong will survive no matter what before knocking Snack out. Gyoro Gyoro is speaking with Monster King Orochi about the monster raid situation. Goketsu managed to take out Genos while on his way to the Sea City Super Stadium. At the super fight, Volten beats Gatlin, Chose beats Dave, and Saitama beats Sourface. Genos wakes up after having been defeated by Goketsu. Genos decides to call for Dr. Kuseno's body recovery drones. Drive Knight takes care of several monsters and asks one of them for information about the current invasion. Child Emperor uses Underdog Man to analyze Eyesight's poisons and build a cure for the paralysis. Child Emperor then proceeds to detonate Underdog Man number 22, but that did not successfully kill Eyesight as she hardened her skin. Eyesight then manages to find Child Emperor but is interrupted and eaten by Pig God. Pig God decides to go after the other monsters in Y City afterwards. Watchdog Man is sitting on top of what was a Monster Association invasion force of around 30 monsters. Garo attempts to attack Watchdog Man while the hero is sitting. Hundred Eyes Octopus defeats several B-Class heroes with ease. The monster attempts to kill Red Muffler, but Bone manages to save his fellow hero. The two then carry the knocked out heroes to safety. Bone attempts to defeat the monster by himself, but is unfortunately crushed by the octopus's tentacle. Death Gatling and the other A-Class heroes come to Red Muffler's aid. Before any of the other heroes could act, Flashy Flash rushes to attack Hundred Eyes Octopus. He proceeds to blind the monster by slicing all of its eyes. The monster squirms in pain, destroying even more infrastructure nearby. Everyone except Flashy Flash retreats, and as Flash is about to finish the monster, suddenly Tatsumaki pulls the monster off the ground. Tatsumaki crushes the monster into a ball in the air and drops it. Tatsumaki then scolds everyone for not taking care of it fast enough. Flashy Flash attempts to defend himself, but is stopped by the other heroes. Gyoro Gyoro and Orochi discuss the revelation of the power of the S-Class. Orochi tells Gyoro Gyoro that it will not be a problem, and they can make as many mysterious beings as they please. Iayan, Okame Itachi, and Bushy Drill are waiting outside discussing about Gero's hero hunt, while their master, Atomic Samurai, is attending a meeting with the Council of Swordmasters. At the meeting, Atomic Samurai asks the council members for help in catching and killing Gero in worries that Bang might fail. The council members agree, except Haragiri, who mocks Atomic Samurai's plea. Haragiri proceeds to show them the monster cells and reveals that he's received them from the Monster Association and transforms into a mysterious being himself. Haragiri then orders the others to eat the cells or he will kill them, but Atomic Samurai cuts him first, killing him. Through his robot, Bofoy questions Orochi and Gyoro Gyoro about their goals, and while they tell him destruction is a natural part of a monster's instincts, it's not their end goal. Meanwhile, the super fight draws to a close as Saitama and Suryu defeat their opponents and prepare to face each other in the final round. Suryu and Saitama size each other up while the announcer and audience have no idea what's going on, and several of the defeated fighters also wonder what's really happening. Suryu takes the fight more seriously, using strong kicks to push Saitama to the edge of the arena and kick him in the air and then back down, landing on Saitama's face, shocking the spectators. Saitama comes out completely unharmed, trying to keep his wig on. As they fight, Snack and Max come and point out Suryu's fighting style, using only leg techniques and hiding his true strength. As they fight, Suryu proclaims he will only use kicks to make the fight more exciting and dares Saitama to punch him, only for Saitama to back away. Suryu analyzes him and asks about his everyday routine. When Saitama lets it slip that he fights monsters, Suryu quickly blows off his claim on being a hero, stating that there is no such thing as a good hero. Meanwhile, the Tank Topper army fight the monsters that invaded the hospital, and Moomin Rider struggles as he tries to protect the patients, but is saved by Tank Top Master. At the Super Fight Tournament, Suryu continues to bash heroes and the industry and kicks Saitama in the head, blowing off his wig. Saitama answers back, telling Suryu not to get any stronger if he still wants to have fun before throwing a punch, stopping before Suryu's face and tearing his shirt with the wind pressure in the process. Saitama is disqualified for wearing a wig, and Suryu is declared the winner. However, he continues to fight. He splits the ring in half and launches multiple barrages at Saitama, but Saitama is unfazed. Saitama concludes that martial arts is just about moving in a cool way. Afterwards, Saitama accidentally launches Suryu out of the ring while trying to mimic one of his techniques. Saitama then runs away as to not get caught. The closing ceremony then commences, but unfortunately this ceremony is interrupted by monsters. 
The three crows bring out the contestants that were supposed to be transported to the hospital back to the ring. Benpatsu tries to escape, but is stopped by Goketsu. Goketsu then tells them that they are all going to become monsters. It's revealed by the Super Fight announcer that Goketsu is the champion of the first Super Fight. Goketsu then explains his disappearance that occurred several years ago. Orochi fought and defeated Goketsu, but he spared Goketsu's life in exchange for Goketsu's service towards the Monster Association. Goketsu accepted the deal because the Monster Association also offered him immense power with monster cells. After finishing his story, Goketsu offers the martial artists a choice, either become monsters or die. Rosie rushes to eat one of the cells and proceeds to attack an injured Dave after being monsterized. Chose snaps Rosie's neck and proceeds to eat one of the cells for himself. After transforming, Chose decides to knock Jakuman out of the ring. Benpatsu, Hamukichi, and Volten follow suit in eating the cells. Suryu asks one of the civilians if he can go on a date with her if he beats up the monsters, which she nods to. With new motivation, Suryu prepares to fight. He approaches the martial artists who became monsters. He defeats Benpatsu, Hamukichi, and Volten with ease, but is then confronted by the monster version of Chose, who proves to be a tough opponent. Suryu manages to provoke Chose, and the latter responds by launching a blast of energy from his horns, intending to kill everyone in the arena. Suryu manages to send the blast away and fights Chose again. With Chose defeated, Suryu confronts Goketsu, who states it'd be a waste to simply kill Suryu. He recognizes the man's strength and tells him he could even become a high-ranked member of the organization if he changed sides, and it would even be guaranteed that he'd be able to live an easy life. For a moment, Suryu seems to consider the offer and nearly eats one of the monster cells, much to the other fighter's surprise and grief. At the last second, however, he states he has no intention to become an ugly monster like Goketsu and attacks him. Goketsu is unfazed by Suryu's attacks and lands a blow that stops him and seemingly injures him a lot. Suryu remains conscious and manages to land many hits on Goketsu, which are ineffective. When he notices that the other martial artists were defeated by the three crows, he lets his guard down and is punched and stomped on by Goketsu. He manages to muster enough strength to escape the monster's grasp and launches himself upward to use Void Shaking Tiger Fist, but finds himself outmatched as Goketsu easily catches the blow. Goketsu then toys with him, which results in severe injuries. Goketsu then orders the three crows to kill Suiryu because of his injuries he isn't able to fight back. He notices Bakuzan watching from the sidelines and asks for his help, but Bakuzan refuses. He instead decides to eat several monster cells, but they overwhelm him and he collapses on the ground unresponsive. Suiryu loses hope, and when the crows attack him, he is saved by Snack and Lightning Max. He decides to team up with the two heroes, and together they manage to eliminate the three crows. Afterwards, he thanks the heroes for their help and suggests that they should all run. However, the heroes decide to stay and fight, trying to buy time for him to run. The heroes are easily beaten, while Bakuzan, now a monster, intercepts Suryu as the latter attempts escape, and he's sent crashing back down into the ground. He manages to get up one last time, but is then continuously beaten down by Bakuzan. Gyoro Gyoro uses its spy drones to overlook the now destroyed cities and inform Orochi that their plan to cause the humans to fear them was complete. Waganma was brought back as a hostage and Phoenix Man asks Gyoro Gyoro for reinforcements, since some monsters were cornered by heroes but the request was denied. The monsters discuss their objectives and note that Nian and Goketsu managed to recruit many monsters. Through the spy drone, Gyoro Gyoro tells Goketsu to leave the stadium. Goketsu tells Bakuzan to go with him to the Monster Association hideout. Bakuzan instead decides to fight Goketsu, but all his attacks are ineffective. After throwing a strong punch that barely missed Bakuzan, he gives Bakuzan a firm warning about taking on the whole Hero Association on his own and heads to Z-City, the meeting point of the Monster Association. After Goketsu left the stadium, Bakuzan ponders about the fact that there is an organization made of monsters that are stronger than him. Suryu is still conscious from the beatings and tells Bakuzan he is not his enemy but Bakuzan grabs him by the hair and reveals that the reason he wants to be strong is to torture people that are weaker than him. Bakuzan begins to torment Suryu by breaking both of his legs. When he accepts his loss, Bakuzan suggests that Suryu lick his feet, stating that he would maybe spare his life, to which Suryu declines by breaking his toe. He then screams for help from a hero and asks the unconscious Snack and Max for help, knowing that there is always hope. Bakuzan decides to stomp on Snack to further torture Suryu, but Snack was saved by Saitama. He then watches on as Saitama prepares to take on Bakuzan. After hearing Suryu's cry for help, Saitama comes to his rescue and confronts Bakuzan. Bakuzan taunts Saitama and brags about his strength, before angrily recounting his Chiranko identity, much to Saitama's confusion. Bakuzan launches a series of attacks on Saitama, but they have no effect. Meanwhile, Saitama tries to recall where he met Bakuzan, but is unable to do so. Nevertheless, he effortlessly kills Bakuzan with one punch. Saitama introduces himself to Suryu. The latter then thanks Saitama and warns him of the Monster Association. He also asks Saitama to hide from Goketsu. Upon learning that Goketsu was a martial arts master, Saitama proceeds to follow after the monster. Suryu tries to stop him but fails. 
he states that there will be more people that will need Saitama in the future. Meanwhile, Saitama kills Goketsu with a punch. Moments later, Goketsu's decapitated head comes flying into the stadium and lands in front of Suryu. Saitama requests the dumbfounded Suryu to keep his participation in the tournament a secret. Suryu tells Saitama that he wants to become a great hero. He asks Saitama to take him as a disciple, but the hero bluntly refuses. Puri Puri Prisoner is fighting the spiked monster Free Hugger and is covered in cuts. He seemed to be losing because he was fighting him with just his bare hands, and the crowd suggests that he use the iron ball chain to his leg to beat it. Unable to hear the crowd's suggestions, he has the idea to accept all of the pain with deep overflowing love. He then squeezes Free Hugger and wins the battle. Soon after, whilst bleeding profusely, he receives a call informing him that his cellmates have been kidnapped. Saitama is seen running around looking for monsters to fight but can't find any that are alive. He then runs into a wounded water gun, who informs Saitama of the powerful monsters he faced and that they all left about 30 minutes before. Saitama then contemplates about how he didn't even notice that such a huge event was happening. Because of this, he begins to question why he should call himself a hero. He then corrects himself and realizes that he never cared about what people thought of him and that nothing else mattered as long as he was satisfied with himself. He then realizes that the whole hero hunter situation that was going on had sparked his interest and caused him to join the tournament, and he realized he gained nothing from it. Saitama is reflecting on himself when he happens to meet King in a deserted street. Saitama and King share a deep conversation and the latter gives some insightful advice to him. King tells Saitama that though he may be the most powerful hero, he's still not the best hero. King invites Saitama to play video games and promises to play with only two fingers, which irks the latter. Meanwhile, an injured Gero has fled after losing to Watchdog Man. Gero believes that while his techniques were designed for human beings, Watchdog Man fought like a quadruped and coupled it with his power, he managed to overcome Gero's attacks with little difficulty. Gero comes across Saitama and King and he decides to attack the latter. Before Gero could pounce on King, Saitama kicks him and sends him crashing into a brick wall. Saitama tells King that he hopes to face the human monster someday, who unknown to Saitama is actually Gero, and that he may turn out stronger than Saitama. Monster Association Arc the ninja duo Gale Wind and Hellfire Flame offer Speedo Sound Sonic a monster cell and invite him to join them in their conquest to kill Flashy Flash. Sonic accepts their offer and takes the monster cell, wanting to give up his humanity to surpass Saitama. At the Hero Association, the staff discusses the sudden monster attack and their quick disappearance. Rabbit, Meat Pounder, and Ironet are sent to defeat Marshall Gorilla, but Zombie Man offers to go instead. Zombie Man observes Marshall Gorilla and notices someone approaching him. Marshall Gorilla meets Armored Gorilla and was shocked to figure out that Armored Gorilla sided with the humans. Marshall Gorilla attacks him with his knife only for it to break on Armored Gorilla, who proceeds to defeat him in one blow. Watching this altercation, Zombie Man decided to follow Armored Gorilla instead. Bang and Bomb talk about Gero. Bang mentions that if Gero gets killed by a hero, it should be him. Sonic cooks and eats the monster cell and gets a stomachache. At the Hero Association HQ, a staff member bursts into the conference room with a message from the Monster Association. It's revealed that the staff member is the host of a parasitic monster. Gyuro Gyuro asks the executives through the staff member not to attack their living area and wishes to have a coexisting society between humans and monsters. However, this is all just a ploy as Destro Chloridium kills one of the executives. Gyuro Gyuro proceeds to reveal their real intent, which is a war between the groups with their very best. Super Alloy Darkshine arrives in time and effortlessly kills Destro Chloridium. Meanwhile, at the Monster Association HQ, the monsters discuss their plan. Awakened Cockroach is eaten by Orochi for losing to Genos and to assert his authority. Doe S was also at risk of being killed but is spared for her abilities. Gero wakes up after being knocked out by Saitama and encounters Death Gatling but decides to call it a day and goes to get some rest. Meanwhile, King dominates Saitama in a fighting game. Gyoro Gyoro discovers that Goketsu was killed and believes that the fight will be harder than originally thought. Genos is fully repaired by Dr. Koseno who spent the whole night fixing him. Genos thanks him for his efforts and states he will never lose again, to which Dr. Kuseno tells Genos to be careful and not to do anything reckless. The Monster Association leaks the information to the public media about the captured hostage and the announced war between them and the Hero Association, and fear spreads among the public. Metal Knight is discussing with Child Emperor about a proposed plan to destroy the Monster Association hideout by killing all the monsters, including the hostage, but as the idea was rejected by the Hero Association, Metal Knight refused to join the mission, much to Child Emperor's annoyance. As the news spread, many monsters decide to join the Monster Association and head towards their hideout, only to be killed by Saitama, who was late for the garbage truck. Terio and his friends are discussing how someone has been using their secret hut in a park. When they arrive, Terio is bullied into entering the hut to tell the person to leave. As Terio enters, much to his surprise, he encounters Gero. Outside, Death Gatling has formed a team of A and B-class heroes to ambush Gero and asks the children to leave. 
Gero then senses killing intent and concludes he's surrounded and asks Terio about the Hero Association. After identifying all the heroes, Gero exits the shack. Gun Gun quickly opens fire on Gero, but Gero easily dodges and attempts to counterattack. However, he's forced to dodge because of Stinger's attack. Stinger's attack is quickly followed up with arrow rain from Shooter, which Gero also manages to dodge. Chain and Toad begins the next wave of attacks as Smile Man attacks from above and Wild Horn attacks from behind. Gero notices Glasses' lack of action, but is then hit by Chain and Toad's weapon and is attacked by Smile Man again. Chain and Toad uses his ear cutter technique but fails to injure Gero. Smile Man and Chain and Toad proceed to continuously barrage Gero before the human monster has any time to recover. Arrow Rain comes down as Smile Man, Chain and Toad, and Gun Gun all attack at once. Despite twisting in the air, Gero is hit by two of the arrows. Glasses resupplies Shooter before Gero tries to go after the hero. Glasses manages to dodge Gero's initial attack and lands a hit on Gero as the hero hunter is distracted by those behind him. Afterward, Death Gatling gives Gero one last chance to surrender. As Gero continues to be attacked by the heroes, he thinks back to a time when the cartoon hero, Justice Man, fought a crab demon and beat the monster with the help of others. Chain and Toad wraps his chain around Gero's ankle to restrict his movement as Smile Man launches another attack, but Gero redirects the ball to take out Chain and Toad. Afterward, he severs the ball from Smile Man's hilt and launches the ball towards Gun Gun, knocking him out. Wild Horn attempts to bring the situation back under control, but just becomes a meat shield for Gero. Glasses and Stinger run to help, but Gero simply uses Glasses' attacks to knock out Shooter. Gero then runs straight towards Stinger as a diversion as he uses Roots to disorient the heroes and knock out Smile Man. Death Gatling tries opening fire on Gero, but Gero eventually uses Glasses as a meat shield. Stinger tries to help Glasses, but he and Glasses are quickly taken out by Gero. Death Gatling takes the opportunity to finish off Gero and unleashes a barrage of bullets, but to his surprise, Gero deflects all of the bullets and knocks him out. Unfortunately, before Gero could rest, Genos arrives because of a support request signal sent by Glasses. Gero and Genos begin trading blows. Gero is unable to find an opportunity to counterattack Genos in his current state and resorts to using Watchdog Man's fighting style to confuse Genos. Meanwhile, King and Saitama continue to play video games. King receives an alert from the emergency transmitter. Saitama then leaves, concerned about Genos. Gero manages to detach Genos' arm, but Genos demonstrates the ability to remotely control his arms and launches Gero towards a tree. Genos then wraps Gero in place and proceeds to use his incineration cannons. However, Gero manages to split the tree and fall. The Monster Association appears to support the Hero Hunter and invites Gero to join their ranks once again, but Gero declines their offer. Before Genos could use his incineration cannons on Gero again, Bang kicks Gero. Bang confronts him while Bomb deals with the Monster Association monsters. The former master and student take their respective stances before finally initiating their fight. As Gero is pummeled by Bang, he tries to counterattack against his former teacher, but his efforts are in vain due to his weakened state and their difference in Water Stream Rock Smashing Fist Mastery. Knowing that he cannot win, he attempts to escape and uses Death Gatling's unconscious body as a meat shield to cover his escape. However, Bomb intercepts him and kicks him in the face towards the group of remaining monsters, causing the monsters to be shredded by Bomb's razor-sharp whirlwind iron-cutting fist. Bang and Bomb then combine their martial arts against Gero. In a state of great pain, Gero remembers his miserable past as a misunderstood child being bullied. In his anger and despair, he commences a counterattack by destroying the ground and grabbing a huge tree during the confusion. Gero swings the tree at Bang and Bomb, forcing them to back off. Phoenix Man suddenly appears and rescues Gero while calling for Elder Centipede to cover their escape. While Phoenix Man escorts Gero to the Monster Association HQ, Elder Centipede must fend off three heroes. Despite their combined strength and even accomplishing significant damage towards Elder Centipede, Bang, Bomb, and Genos were unable to defeat the monster and are forced to retreat. Bang tries to sacrifice himself and unleashes full power to buy Bomb time to escape with Genos and the unconscious heroes. Fortunately, King arrives and catches Elder Centipede's attention by tricking him into believing that he brought Blast with him, making the monster charge toward him. Elder Centipede meets his demise when an unnoticed Saitama, who was with King, threw a serious punch that disintegrated his entire body from head to tail. The Hero Association staff discuss recent events. Sitch declares that Gero should be recognized as a dragon-level threat. Some of the staff suggest that Blast should be called, but Sitch explains that the hero acts on his own. Narinki announces his frustration at the Hero Association staff, but Sekengar assures the donor that they will save his son. Sekengar later meets with Super Alloy Darkshine, Pig God, Tatsumaki, and Drive Knight about preparations, while Child Emperor works to find the Monster Association HQ. Multiple S-Class heroes and Sweet Mask arrive back at the Hero Association HQ after their investigations. Child Emperor pleads for Bofoy's participation in the assault against the Monster Association, but Bofoy declines once again. 
Fubuki attempts to rally Saitama and his acquaintances to take the situation more seriously. However, everyone has an excuse not to accompany Fubuki. Saitama leaves to find Gero. Narinki orders Narinki's private squad to rescue his son from the Monster Association. Gero wakes up to find himself inside the Monster Association HQ. Narinki's private squad was captured just beforehand by G5 and are left to be judged by Gyoro Gyoro. Do S then proceeds to make them her love slaves. Afterward, Gero is requested by Orochi to bring back the head of any hero to prove that he is a mysterious being within one day. Gyoro Gyoro commands Bug God and Royal Ripper to monitor Gero as the hero hunter completes his endeavor. A new group agrees with the monster outbreak and attempts to capture a citizen for disagreeing with their ideology, but have the misfortune of bumping into Gero, who knocks them out with a flick before heading to a nearby restaurant. Saitama is having lunch at the same restaurant, but is not able to pay because he lost his wallet. Coincidentally, Fubuki arrives and begins talking about the hero hunter while also once again trying to get him into her hero faction. Saitama misleads Fubuki into eating the fries as Gero dashes out and everyone screams Dine and Dasher. Saitama then takes the opportunity to go catch the Dine and Dasher and push the bill into Fubuki. Sometime later, Gero scares some boys who were bullying Terio. Soon enough, Saitama catches up to Gero and lets Gero off with a warning. This severely angers Gero, thinking that heroes are starting to take pity on him. He resolves to carry out his task by bringing back Saitama's head, but Saitama accidentally punches Gero, knocking him out. Later, Gero wakes up and asks Terio who the hero was. Immediately after, Bug God and Royal Ripper confront Gero. Royal Ripper approaches Terio, to which Gero tells him to back off. Gero assumes a stance in front of Terio as Bug God and Royal Ripper approach the pair. Royal Ripper reveals that Gyuro Gyuro had sent him and Bug God to follow and monitor Gero. After observing his behavior, they now have doubts about Gero's intent, questioning if he's a true monster or not. Gero then proceeds to provoke Royal Ripper to little use as the latter then demands the former to kill Terio. Gero then tells Terio to go home, but Terio is unable to do so due to fear. Due to this, Terio is berated by Gero, who then forces the Hero Association catalog out of his hand, saying that the boy needs to get stronger during times like these. While doing so, Royal Ripper attacks Terio. The attack is quickly stopped by Gero, who hoists Royal Ripper up into the air by his blades and swiftly delivers a kick to his opponent's abdomen. Royal Ripper then flies into the air as a result, but is quick to get back on his feet by thrusting his blades into the ground and performing a somersault with the two blades acting as anchoring points. The move severely disfigured his arms, but Royal Ripper restores his limbs to their original state by twisting them back. Gero then yells at Terio, telling him to run. The boy complies and dashes away. As he's doing so, Royal Ripper announces Gero to be an enemy, and Gero assumes a stance as the two monsters charge him. At the Monster Association HQ, Gyoro Gyoro is seen meditating on a beanbag while Phoenix Man enters the room. Phoenix Man then asks Gyoro Gyoro for an explanation about sending two aggressive monsters to observe Gero, to which Gyoro Gyoro replies that the two might be able to mentor Gero on killing heroes. Phoenix Man states that the two are too unruly to follow orders and will murder Gero if given the chance. He says that this is especially the case with Royal Ripper, whom even fellow monsters avoid contact with. As a counter-argument, Gyoro Gyoro states that Gero needs to be physically and mentally pushed to the limit to develop and proceeds to explain to Phoenix Man where Orochi came from. Gyoro Gyoro reveals that Orochi was a simple human being, and that he is responsible for the creation of the Monster King, and that Orochi only became as such through countless failures and sacrifices on Gyoro Gyoro's part. Gyoro Gyoro then goes on to say that Gero could become the next Orochi if given the same treatment. Atop a roof, Zombie Man is observing a takoyaki shop, suspecting it to be a new front for the House of Evolution. Upon entering, he encounters Armored Gorilla, who assumes Zombie Man to be a customer. The hero introduces himself, but is surprised by Armored Gorilla after he reveals that the House of Evolution has ceased to exist. Zombie Man then meets up with Dr. Genus, who goes on to mention the fact that he fondly remembers Zombie Man as the successful immortal specimen that escaped and destroyed his facility. Zombie Man then threatens Dr. Genus with a large axe and asks him why the House of Evolution was destroyed, stating that the facility could always be rebuilt as long as Genus is alive. The scientist responds by giving an account of his encounter with Saitama, who, according to Genus, had removed his limiter and possessed greater power than anything artificial. He then expands on the concept of the limiter, explaining that every single being has a limit on how much they can develop because too much power can potentially create mindless rampaging monsters. As such, God created the limiter to restrict everyone's abilities, thus ensuring their survival and mental integrity. Zombie Man then raises the question of whether the person who removed his limiter did so without any cost. Genus states that the individual paid for his immense power by losing his hair and having to bear the overwhelming sense of detachment from society. Zombie Man responds by saying that those who possess immense powers without becoming a monster are called heroes. Genus then explains that humans become monsters due to internal factors, bad habits, mental abnormalities or frustration, as well as external, pollutants or chemicals, and as such are different from those who remove their limiter. 
Monsters such as the Sea Folk appearing in Jay City or the Dark Matter Thieves are simply sentient beings that are hostile to humans. As for heroes, Genus states that they already possess potential at birth and manage to develop that potential through extensive efforts. Others could achieve great powers through artificial means such as mechanization, experimentation, or were born with great powers. However, Saitama is an exception because he is an ordinary person with no unique potential whatsoever, but managed to remove the barrier for growth simply through sheer force of will and effort. It is for this reason that Genus relinquished his ambitions, saying they're now laughable. As Royal Ripper and Bug God charge, Garo delivers a punch towards Bug God's torso. Unfortunately, this injures his hand. Royal Ripper then performs a chain of frenzied slashes aimed at Garo, but they're all dodged or reflected. As Garo is busy with Royal Ripper's chain of attacks, Bug God approaches from behind, but is bombarded with a flurry of deflected slashes from Royal Ripper. The monster is undeterred by this as he quickly pounds Garo into the ground and then flings him onto electrical cables, which briefly electrocute Garo. Garo rebounds himself towards the two monsters as they leap towards him. The three eventually enter a stalemate, with Garo now confident in his abilities to defeat his opponents, while the pair of monsters decide to go all out. Garo is not discouraged by this, even going on to say that he has seen everything they have to offer and he will not be hit by them again. It then transpires that Terio was captured by Sludge Jellyfish. While Garo is distracted, Royal Ripper and Bug God brutalize him, leaving Garo in a pool of blood. Bug God quickly puts a stop to the assault, explaining that Garo should be left alive. Royal Ripper ceases attacking, but declares it may be too late for Garo. He then invites Terio back home with an eerie grin, saying that they will be great friends. In Saitama's apartment, Genos, King, Bang, and Bomb are anxiously waiting for Saitama to return. When Saitama turns up looking disheveled, they presume that he fought with Garo. Saitama denies it, unaware that he had indeed met Garo and defeated him for the third time. Fubuki also arrives, while Genos detects something approaching fast and sends King to deal with it. The monster is revealed to be Dr. Kuseno, who came in a mechanical suit to check on Genos. Dr. Kuseno introduces himself to Saitama and gifts him high-quality meat for Hot Pot. Saitama instructs Genos to prepare the hot pot before realizing that he would have to share it with the other visitors. Meanwhile, in the Monster Association, Royal Ripper and Bug God try to explain Gero's death to Gyoro Gyoro by blaming Gero and then Gyoro Gyoro. Gyoro Gyoro sees through their antics but spares them from punishment and tells them to take things seriously as the Hero Association could attack in a few hours. Gyoro Gyoro has captured Child Emperor's scouting robot Dig Here Woof Woof Number 3. Many members of the Monster Association are seen preparing, socializing, or otherwise loitering around as they wait for the battle ahead. Terio, as a prisoner, is put into the same cell as the hostage Waganma. Waganma is confident that his rich status means that the heroes will save him and snobbishly attempts to make Terio his subordinate. Meanwhile, Gera awakens in the spot where he was abandoned and begins to move off. Back at the Hero Association HQ, Child Emperor and Second Guard go through the roster of heroes. Child Emperor becomes paranoid and exerts his influence to remove Demon Cyborg and Silver Fang from the rescue mission. Sitch, despite his protests, is instructed not to inform the two. At Saitama's apartment, the group of seven is about to eat the steaming hot pot. They rush in with their chopsticks all at once, throwing the food up into the air. King is instantly knocked out, but nobody notices. Fubuki uses telekinesis to bring a piece of meat toward her, but Genos tries to reclaim it for Saitama, who asks why everyone is eating his food. During the argument that ensues, Dr. Kuseno calms Genos down, only for Fubuki to attempt to recruit the engineer for weapons development. Saitama is annoyed that the meat is already gone, and soon after finds King sleeping. The Hero Association is about to deploy the S-Class without Watchdog Man, Blast, and Metal Knight, with Genos and Bang's whereabouts being unknown to them to deal with the monsters. Every hero from C-Class to A-Class who is available was sent to deal with the Monster Association's forces, while the S-Class heroes deal with the Dragon-level monsters. Garo breaks into the facility just in time to save Terio from Royal Ripper. Despite being stabbed in the gut by the monster, Garo punches Royal Ripper's head off with one blow, killing him in the process, before using Whirlwind Iron Cutting Fist to shred the monster to pieces. Garo and Terio then make their escape, only to encounter two monsters who were quickly dispatched by Garo. The hero hunter devours one of the limbs of the monsters to replenish himself before proceeding with Terio. As they make their escape, Terio tells him that there's another child that needs rescuing, but Gero says that's none of his concern and that he did not come here to save Terio either. However, before the two can continue, they're met with Overgrown Rover. Gero and Terio slowly back away to avoid a confrontation. As they're about to turn a corner, Super Mouse suddenly attacks. Gero pulls Terio back, saving him, while Unihorn and Showerhead follow up by lunging at Gero and dousing him with hot water. The three monsters launch a united attack on the Hero Hunter, but Gero kicks Unihorn into a wall, cracks Showerhead's faucet, and uses Whirlwind Iron Cutting Fist to cut into Super Mouse's arm. This impresses the monsters and Terio, to the point where they acknowledge his strength. Terio claims that Gero is getting stronger, and he states that he's used to fighting multiple opponents. 
Super Mouse replies by saying they've been evaluated by Gyoro Gyoro, so their strength is without question, to which Gyoro responds saying that he should possess a threat level of dragon. Super Mouse replies again, saying that the threat level dragon is only reserved for the Monster Association cadres. Super Mouse, Unihorn, and Showerhead reveal that they've been stalling and proceed to attempt to punch a hole through Gero using their Demon Trinity Bursting Speed Thrust. Gero easily deflects the attack back into the hallway, mocking the technique's power. A roar is heard down the hallway, prompting Gero to realize that he has deflected the attack onto overgrown Rover. Rover easily dispatches Unihorn and appears before them, firing an energy blast. Showerhead attempts to cancel it out with his maximum water pressure while Super Mouse guards, stating that he can revive himself by regenerating. Gero grabs Terio and begins to run away. As a result of Rover's blast, everything above ground in Z-City shakes. Gero manages to break out of the hallway he and Terio are in and escape the destruction, but Rover follows. Gero tosses Terio to the side, claiming that they have to split up, but Terio protests. Rover begins charging up another blast, but Gero dashes underneath him and attacks Rover's leg. Showing no signs of being affected at all by Gero's attack, Rover turns and fires a blast directly on top of him. The blast had enough destructive power to break through multiple floors of the hideout, creating a massive hole, but at the very bottom, Gero is still standing with his clothes in tatters. Rover quickly fires off more energy blasts, but Gero jumps to dodge them. Rover inspects the destruction at the bottom, but Gero is hanging off a ledge above Rover. Gero lets go of the ledge and yelled at Rover to sit down, throwing a punch that knocks Rover onto the floor, but Rover immediately gets back up, showing no signs of damage. Rover then throws Gero into the floor and blasts him with another energy blast, pushing him through another set of floors beneath them. Gero, still conscious, is buried underneath a pile of rubble directly in front of Gyoro Gyoro, who lifts the rubble on top of him, stating that Gero lived up to expectations. Gyoro Gyoro goes on to state that he's very pleased, before paralyzing Gero and commending him on his strength in such a short amount of time. Saitama suits up and heads out towards the battered streets. Meanwhile, Gero remains restrained by Gyoro Gyoro's psychic powers. Gyoro Gyoro comments on Gero's incomplete monster transformation. Gyoro Gyoro desires to elevate Gero into an even greater monster through a specialized process. They explain that to accelerate the growth process, the human must repeatedly experience death to overwhelm the body and spirit. This is a delicate balance as the human can easily succumb to death during the process and even successful candidates will stagnate due to their lowered intelligence. The key ingredient needed is for the human to experience their very own personal hell. Gero says that it sounds like Gyoro Gyoro performed this process numerous times, which Gyoro Gyoro confirms. While it is easy to turn humans into monsters, the process simply improves existing abilities the human has and has little to no prospect for further growth. Gero grimly stares on as Gyoro Gyoro goes into detail about the experiments. From the experiments, the repeated experiences of death allow the person to explosively grow in strength and abilities. Despite this know-how, Gyoro Gyoro never managed to create a monster with a disaster level dragon except for one. The scene cuts back to a woman wearing glasses approaching a silhouetted man. She states that the man has turned his back on humanity and is going crazy. The scene changes again and the woman looks up toward the newly created monster King Orochi. Gyoro Gyoro mentions that Gero has qualities greater than that of Orochi, and through his battle with Royal Ripper and Bug God, Gero has broken through another wall of his limits. Gyoro Gyoro then offers Gero to join forces. Gero refuses, but Gyoro Gyoro says he never had a choice. Gyoro Gyoro reasserts Gero's powerlessness by reminding him of his binding and her psychic powers dwarfing the psychic sisters, Tatsumaki and Fubuki. Nevertheless, Gero begins to take a step as he's getting used to it. This time, Gyoro Gyoro disciplines Gero with force by throwing rocks at him. In doing so, a weakness is revealed in that Gyoro Gyoro can only perform one action at a time, and Gero is freed from his binding. Gero then threatens to kill Gyoro Gyoro. Afterward, Orochi intervenes, grabbing Gero and pulling him down to eye level with Orochi. The fight then starts with Orochi firing his horns at Gero, piercing him and leaving a visible round hole in his abdomen. Gyoro Gyoro comments on Orochi's horn manipulation as his first discovery as a monster. Gero defends himself with water stream rock smashing fist and stays on the move, killing some monsters as he does so. Gero leaps to attack Orochi head on, but mouths within mouths open up in Orochi's jaw and almost bite down on him. Orochi transforms into a serpent-like being that seems to be a mixture of a Hydra and a Tyrannosaurus Rex. The reptilian heads fire a superheated flame at Gero, incinerating the entire stage. A fist forms from the snake's appendages and smacks down on Gero, sending him into a wall. Gyoro Gyoro calls for Gero to give up, but Gero refuses, bragging about his status as a genius combatant. He acknowledges Orochi's strength, but claims that he's missing the primal terror that makes him a true monster. Gero utilizes Water Stream Rock Smashing Fist, but Orochi copies his stance. Gyoro Gyoro informs Gero that Orochi is a genius in the same way as him and has managed to adapt his style as they fought. The fight renews, and this time the dragon appendages all utilize Water Stream Rock Smashing Fist. In the end, Gero is defeated. 
Meanwhile, Saitama is looking down at a manhole where he is sure he heard sounds coming from. The S-Class is having a meeting discussing the Monster Association and their plan of attack. Sweet Mask barges into the meeting and insists that he should lead the S-Class heroes. This antagonizes Tatsumaki, Flashy Flash, and Zombie Man. Right before things come to blows, King enters and quells the situation with their mutual respect for him. Sweet Mask leaves, but says that he'll be part of the underground strike force. Sekengar and Sitch are discussing the situation. Sitch is surprised that Sekengar is personally heading to the scene, as he thought he was only motivated by fame. Sekengar confirms that he is motivated by fame, and he believes that he will be remembered in history for taking down such a threat. They move down to greet various heroes that arrived by helicopter. Mizuki, Crescent Eyebrow, Needlestar, Gearspur, Narcissistoic, Feather, Jet Nice Guy, One Shotter, and various other heroes arrive on the scene for a total of 15. Sitch is informed by staff that Silver Fang has arrived. After he leaves, Bomb tells Bang that they suspect him. King enters the same room as Bang and Bomb to hide. Bang coaxes out information on the rescue operation and they decide to meet up at Saitama's apartment so they can invade the base on the same route as King. King rejoins the waiting heroes and they leave. Fubuki walks towards Saitama's apartment while thinking about her situation. They encounter Genos, who is thinking over information on his new form. They enter Saitama's apartment only to find Saitama missing. Genos finds his hero suit missing and concludes he must have left. Bang, Bomb, and King soon arrive. They decide to have Genos wait for Saitama at the apartment, while the rest head toward the raid. Meanwhile, Saitama is still exploring the tunnel down the manhole. The hero's strike team arrived at the Z-City ghost town. The heroes comment on it before getting interrupted by Zombie Man's warning up ahead. Numerous monsters led by Evil Eye jump out and surround the hero's strike team. Sekengar expresses surprise over Gyoro Gyoro's underhanded tactics while Feather readies up for battle. Evil Eye mocks the heroes' strike team due to their lack of numbers, and Child Emperor tallies the number of monsters to over 150. Tatsumaki disregards their numbers while Puri Puri Prisoner encourages other boys to stay behind him. Evil Eye then telekinetically lifts several buildings. Tatsumaki responds by creating a barrier protecting the strike team but leaves them to deal with the falling debris. Puri Puri Prisoner and Super Alloy Darkshine ultimately save Shadow Ring, Narcissistoic, Gearspur, Green, and Food Battler Futoshi from the falling debris. Sekengar angrily questions Tatsumaki on her attitude and she brushes him off, saying that if they can't deal with the debris, they should leave as they will get in the way. Evil Eye declares that he will gouge out the eyes of Tatsumaki and her sister Fubuki as an experiment, which angers Tatsumaki. They fight, leaving a great whirlwind behind as the rest of the monsters attack, and the support heroes show off their skills. Some notable talents include Twin Tail's Death Loop Attack, One Shotter's Shooting Abilities, Green's Chlorokinesis, Narcissistoic's So Called Beautiful Attacks, Feather's Aerial Attacks, Shadow Ring's Ninjutsu, Double Hole's Nose Attack, Jet Nice Guy's New Cyborg Body, Needle Star's Skill with His Chain Mace, Mizuki's Killer Athleticism, Food Battle Futoshi's Surprising Agility, Strange Binding Shell's Rope Movements, and Poison's Poison Knife. Sweet Masks comments on Feather's star potential, and Flashy Flash asks Shadow Ring where she learned her ninjutsu, to which she answers that she's from a different place from where Flashy Flash learned his. Super Alloy Darkshine praises Mizuki's muscles while he blows up some monsters. Gearspur believes he took down some monsters when it was actually the work of Bushi Drill and Okama Itachi, while Sekengar shoots a laser beam from his metallic eye. More monsters show up, but Rhino Wrestler barges his way through. Once a tiger disaster level, Rhino Wrestler has trained enough to become rated as a demon level, according to Gyoro Gyoro. The support heroes engage him, while up above, Gyoro Gyoro continues to watch the battle with the spy drone. Atomic Samurai then steps into the battle intent on ending it quickly and slashes so quickly that Rhino Wrestler doesn't even notice he's been cut until it's too late. Atomic Samurai then moves on to finish off other monsters and notices Flashy Flash doing the same. Super Alloy Darkshine bursts open monsters by simply running through them and Pig God eats one. Puri Puri Prisoner punches a monster to bits and Tatsumaki drops down with the remains of Evil Eye. Above, Gyoro Gyoro's spy drone is cut in two by Child Emperor. Gyoro Gyoro states that he has already seen the battle, although he would have preferred to see King in action. Gyoro Gyoro's attention is drawn toward the approaching figures where one of them is irritated by her summons. The short, black, mysterious being questions why Orochi, Nyan, a rotund-looking monster, a scruffy-looking man wearing a crown, and a fat, ugly monster were all called. Meanwhile, Super Alloy Darkshine, Crescent Eyebrow, and Feather finish off some monsters. Double Hole and Green are administrating first aid to Needlestar. Mizuki, along with Gearspur, is struggling to push Pig God down the stairs to the Monster Association. Atomic Samurai helps them through and reassures his pupil, Iain, of his worries. Gyoro Gyoro rebukes the monsters that ran away from the initial confrontation with the heroes and killed the cowardly monsters by feeding them to Orochi. He warns the remaining monsters not to fail him again and orders them to attack their assigned heroes. The rest of the S-Class heroes take their routes with Atomic Samurai's disciples following him. 
Flashy Flash goes over the information on the transmitter before he runs into Gale Wind and Hellfire Flame. Gale Wind and Hellfire Flame compliment Flashy Flash on his speed, all the while Flashy Flash determines who hired them to attack him. Gale Wing asks what if Abura Bozu, the king of organ traders, hired him, but Flashy Flash denies it, saying he already killed him. On top of that, Flashy Flash states he already killed Harold the Drug Kingpin, Heart Collector Burigura, Phantom Thief Chimagusa, the Invincible Pirate Captain Devil Storm, and the higher-ups of the Coalition of Assassins. Gale Wind reveals their motivations to be ruling the world and that ninjas from their ninja village will be the most troublesome opponent. Flashy Flash scores a hit on the monsters and tells them to bring out their monster forms. Unperturbed by the reveal, Gale Wind and Hellfire Flame bring them out. They continue attacking Flashy Flash and reveal their disaster level as Dragon. With their increased speed, the monsters keep up the pressure on Flashy Flash. However, even after Hellfire Flame utilizes his technique Fire Release, Blazing Scattering Slash, Flashy Flash can block it. Flashy Flash uses Heavy Flashy Slash, aiming to destroy Hellfire Flame's sword. Gale Wind expresses astonishment at Flashy Flash's technical prowess, and the monsters decide to abandon the battle as ninjas and fight using brute speed and strength. The two monsters can pressure Flashy Flash, managing to make him cough up blood. However, once the hero became serious, he strikes both of them with a series of kicks and then slices both of them in half with his ultimate technique, Flashy Slash, ending their lives. After Flashy Flash leaves the battlefield and arrives at a junction, he decides to use his locator to figure out his location, only to realize he lost it during the battle. Child Emperor is walking down a passageway and monitoring what the other heroes are doing. A monster tries to ambush him, only to be shot dead by one of Child Emperor's robots, Mini Octo Tank No. 8. He then finds the remnants of the destroyed Metal Knight unit. He's concerned that there may be robotics experts working with the Monster Association, and that the technology that was developed to fight monsters may end up being used against the heroes themselves. He then decides to try salvaging some information from the remains of the robot in hopes of finding out where the hostage Waganma is being held. The robot yields a detailed map showing where the hostage is held, and Child Emperor is angry that Metal Knight has refused to share this information despite knowing it. He then realizes that Octotank has been destroyed by Phoenix Man, who asks if he was here to play. Phoenix Man monologues about his role within the Monster Association and his backstory before attacking Child Emperor, only to run hard into an invisible shield. As the monster reels in pain, Child Emperor executes Phoenix Man with an array of tools that spring from his backpack. He rescues Waganma by gassing the monsters guarding the hostage's cell while protecting Waganma with a frog-themed gas mask. As they're about to leave, Sludge Jellyfish oozes in and attempts to crush Child Emperor, only to realize that this is unsuccessful, as Child Emperor has put up a shield generated by his umbrella. He tries to cut up Sludge Jellyfish before defeating the monster by dousing it in liquid fuel and setting it alight. As the two of them escape, he notes that something appears to be up ahead and sends a toy tank as a sentry. The tank is destroyed as Machine God G5 appears. Child Emperor attempts to disable the machine using a high voltage cage and a jamming signal but G5 defeats it easily. After destroying Child Emperor's radio controlled sentry, G5 resists the attacks of Child Emperor's enemy machine disabling device Bug Kun and swiftly destroys it. G5 battles the newly combined Underdog Man, Mad Dog Underdog Cerberus while hampered by Child Emperor's bird lime missiles. As G5 battles Mad Dog Underdog Cerberus, Child Emperor and Waganma escape. On their way, they come across Phoenix Man's shredded body. Suddenly, Phoenix Man arises into a new, stronger form. Child Emperor confronts the monster and uses five layers of his transparent film, but is broken through by Phoenix Man's beak attack. Frustrated at his uselessness, tears flow down his cheeks and Child Emperor is forced to summon his ultimate weapon, the Mech Brave Giant. However, Phoenix Man correctly deduces that the mech has limitations, and Child Emperor reaffirms to himself that the monster must be dealt with as soon as possible. Child Emperor uses his divider shield and charges at Phoenix Man. Brave Giant locks onto Phoenix Man and launches a volley of heat-seeking missiles, which Phoenix Man can prematurely detonate by using Phoenix Flare. Child Emperor then activates Brave Giant's Delta Scale Saber and slashes at Phoenix Man, who dodges them. Phoenix Man, noting the sloppiness of Brave Giant's attack patterns, initiates his Phoenix Fire Falcon mode, and circles around the mech suit, now faster than before. Phoenix Man uses Phoenix Heat Up Talon Strike on Brave Giant several times, damaging the suit. Child Emperor, however, counters by launching Little Braves, autonomous robots from the armor, which charge up all range attack and fire at Phoenix Man. The monster changes once more, this time entering Phoenix Prominence Hawk mode and absorbs the attack. Child Emperor, desperate to finish the battle, uses Brave Giant to launch a downward assault on Phoenix Man using one of Brave Giant's swords, but Phoenix Man catches on, destroying the blade. Phoenix Man uses the opportunity to attack Waganma with his Phoenix homing wing attack, forcing Child Emperor to come to the hostage's aid. Brave Giant blocks most of Phoenix Man's attacks and then responds with suppressing fire from its machine guns. Phoenix Man resolves to continue distracting Brave Giant and run down its timer, but is suddenly caught in an electromagnetic shield launched by the mech. Brave Giant, still holding Waganma, launches a right hook punch at Phoenix Man, but Phoenix Man can catch it. 
Child Emperor activates Brave Giant's boosters, overpowering Phoenix Man and sending the trio tumbling through many floors. Child Emperor notices the signal from one of the other hero's locators and hopes to meet up with them to finish off Phoenix Man, who he believes will resurrect again. The group suddenly finds themselves in the same room that Flashy Flash had just done battle in and sink into a pool of water. Reaching the bottom, Child Emperor spots a bunch of strange masks resting on the floor and contemplates what occurred, shortly before finding Flashy Flash's locator. As Child Emperor wonder what's happened to the hero, something behind Brave Giant explodes, sending the mech suit tumbling through the water. Phoenix Man revives himself again and displays his newfound powers by reanimating the corpses of the subterranean people, Gale Wind and Hellfire Flame. While Child Emperor deals with the undead army, Phoenix Man takes Waganma and starts flying away. Child Emperor finishes off the army and races after him, launching an all-out energy beam on Phoenix Man. Phoenix Man withstands the beam and his body changes again, gaining withered patches on half of his body. Child Emperor then opens the robot's emergency hatch and has Little Brave close it on Phoenix Man, trapping him. The monster easily rips the mech apart, but Child Emperor managed to sneak in a tickling robot within Phoenix Man's costume while he was trapped, stating that the robot would tickle him until he died of asphyxiation. Phoenix Man hastily attempts to get rid of this tickling robot by ripping his costume. With the costume ripped, Phoenix Man loses his powers, and Child Emperor proceeds to kick him in the groin before tearing off the rest of the costume to ensure he doesn't revive himself again. Phoenix Man lies defeated as Child Emperor turns to Waganma, asking him if there were any other hostages, but Waganma decides to not tell Child Emperor that Terio was taken too. Zombie Man travels through the Monster Association HQ on his strike route and eradicates all monsters he encounters. He meets a crowd of monsters that direct him to a room, stating that they won't attack, that they only want him to fight something. Zombie Man complies and walks into the room where he encounters Vampire or Pure Blood. Despite suffering many fatal wounds, Zombie Man continues battling until he kills Pure Blood. After the battle, he remarks that he hasn't found someone as strong as Pure Blood for some time and that it had left him tired. The hero bends the door's bar around the handles to lock the room and turns to wipe out the remaining monsters who decided to watch his fight with Pure Blood. He walks out of the room having killed them all and decides to sit down a bit to heal himself and smoke a cigarette while checking his locator. Child Emperor reports that he has rescued the hostage Waganma and is bringing him to the surface. Child Emperor orders all heroes to continue their assigned mission but warns them not to venture too far into the Monster Association HQ. Zombie Man finishes his break and stands up fully healed then continues down his strike route. Pig God comes across the Great Food Tub. The sounds of their battle are overheard by Eian, Bushy Drill, and Okama Itachi. They refocus their attention on the mind-controlled mercenaries and Doe S. The mercenaries attack the heroes, and while distracted, Doe S aims to mind control Bushy Drill with her whip. The whip is snatched out of the air by Sweet Mask, and he calls upon the sword heroes to move on as he deals with them. Eian and Bushy Drill protest, unsure of letting Sweet Mask fight them by himself, but Okama Itachi convinces them to move on and let Sweet Mask fight in their place. The three disciples decide to trust in Sweet Mask and retreat, leaving him alone to face Doe S and the brainwashed Narinki squad. Doe S tells Sweet Mask that she's a fan of his and offers to release the slaves in exchange for spending time with him. Sweet Mask tells her that bargaining won't work against him. Doe S responds by ordering her slaves to attack the hero, while the disciples dash off to another area. Sweet Mask effortlessly tears through the entire Narinki squad, subsequently killing all them. He continues to charge towards Doe S, who is shocked at how Sweet Mask dealt with the mercenaries. She attempts to brainwash him by striking him with her whip, but fails to do so as Sweet Mask is somehow immune to such attacks. Realizing this, Doe S quickly surrenders and submits, promising that she will obey his every command. Unmoved by Doe S's plea for mercy, Sweet Mask takes her life. The scene cuts to the disciples staring in shock at Pig God who was digesting the great food tub. The three disciples then agree to find another way into the base. Slicing up the ground below them, they descend to a lower floor and encounter the mysterious being Devil Longhair. Okama Itachi is romantically tempted by the monster's good looks but restrains himself to send an air blade at him. The monster blocks it with his hair and strikes at the heroes from underground. The heroes work together to strike at his hair while recalling Atomic Samurai's words of advice. Meanwhile, Puri Puri Prisoner is engaged in combat with several monsters. A large blast occurs and the monsters laugh, thinking they have finished off their opponent. As the dust clears, we see a glimpse of a seemingly intact Puri Puri Prisoner. Various monsters find their attacks on Puri Puri Prisoner don't work. Puri Puri Prisoner explains to them that embracing the pain with love allows him to take these hits. He dubs his power Angel Hug. Realizing their strength wouldn't be enough, the monsters flee only to be stopped by the demon level monster Bakuma, who inhales the fleeing monsters absorbing their powers. Bakuma then fires a variety of attacks at the hero, but Puri Puri Prisoner remains undeterred. The monster mocks him, but the hero completely smashes through him and ends the monster's life. Soon after, Puri Puri Prisoner hears the voices of the inmates and expresses dismay at their predicament. Believing the inmates to be forced to do the Monster Association's bidding, he vows to save them. The inmates attempt to explain their hatred to Puri Puri Prisoner, but he continually ignores it. 
Nian then interjects and says that once a human becomes a monster, they will never turn back, before slashing Puri Puri prisoner, severely injuring him, leaving the rest of the inmates. Puri Puri prisoner stands strong, however, and declares that as long as the heart is human, then they will always be human. Nian, disturbed by Puri Puri prisoner's strange personality, decides to leave him to the others and escapes through a narrow crack. Puri Puri Prisoner gives chase after thinking up a new technique, Angel Crawl, but accidentally crushes his fellow inmates in debris, killing almost all of them. He loses his armored hair and accepts their sacrifice by avenging them. Puri Puri Prisoner is left exasperated over Nian running away and carries on his way. Super Alloy Darkshine encounters Bug God and was initially discouraged at Bug God's boast, but is let down by the monster's weak strength. Super Alloy Darkshine tells the monster that along with King and Tatsumaki, he is one of the three heroes you must never anger. Bug God transforms into a new form, growing four extra arms and wings, but Super Alloy Darkshine destroys the monster in one hit. Saitama is wandering through the Monster Association HQ and fights overgrown Rover. Saitama punches the monster, shaking the entire headquarters and the ground above. Nian attempts to assassinate Saitama with Super Feline Retribution, but the hero is unfazed and the monster escapes underground. Gyoro Gyoro contemplates over Saitama's attack before Tatsumaki appears. Gyoro Gyoro then crushes Tatsumaki under a globe of rocks and compresses it, but Tatsumaki breaks free easily. The hero sends a rock, blasting through Gyoro Gyoro's barrier and bursting its arm. The monster reveals its true form, and many eyes open around its body. Gyoro Gyoro sends a super gravitational wave that multiplies the gravity in the region by 300. Tatsumaki remains unimpressed and destroys the monster's body. Gyoro Gyoro pretends to be in the throes of death, but Tatsumaki sees through the meat puppet act and decides that she will pull out his real body. Gyoro Gyoro, regretting his grave miscalculation to battle Tatsumaki, calls upon Orochi to assist. However, there is no response. Deprived of his last option, Gyoro Gyoro attempts to bargain with the hero. Meanwhile, Saitama looks down upon a great hole in the Monster Association HQ. At the bottom, Orochi climbs up fully transformed and confronts Saitama. Saitama questions why the creatures are living under his home, and Orochi declares his acknowledgement of Saitama's threat. Saitama tells Orochi that he is merely a person who lives above ground. Orochi then attacks Saitama with his horns and notes the impact he felt earlier was from Saitama and that he was not on the Monster Association's warning lists. He then states that if Saitama is not defeated here and now, it will become very dangerous. Orochi breathes fire on Saitama, which he narrowly dodges. Overgrown Rover then awakens and Orochi orders him to dispose of the intruder. However, Rover, recognizing the agent of his defeat, quickly runs away from the fight. A surprised Orochi then asks Saitama what he did to Rover and Saitama responds by saying he beat him up. Orochi realizes that Saitama is the reason for Goketsu and Elder Centipede's demise and remarks on how excited he is, and then transforms into a more humanoid form. He then states that he's curious to see what Saitama, as a dueling partner with immense strength, has to offer him. Saitama then states that despite what monsters say about them being the ultimate life form, they all fall to one single punch from him. Orochi then attacks using the dragons on one of his arms. They are all quickly felled by Saitama. The dragons from his other arm generate a massive beam of electricity that destroys the ground and creates a massive tunnel. This surprises the other S-Class heroes who defend themselves from the electricity. The tunnel destroys a subway line and the confused driver questions what happened as he sees Saitama speed by. Saitama then destroys Orochi with a single punch. Orochi's shattered head questions what it was that just hit him and Saitama responds by saying it was a normal punch. Orochi, now knowing terror, then falls into the abyss below, defeated. A defeated Gyoro Gyoro is searching for Orochi using his eyes. Upon realizing he's perished, Gyoro Gyoro looks around for the man who defeated him. The eye finds Saitama and is promptly crushed by him, but not before Gyoro Gyoro notes his bald appearance. Upon hearing this description, Tatsumaki wonders if Super Alloy Darkshine is the hero being referred to. Gyoro Gyoro disregards this and questions if Orochi is dead. Tatsumaki tells Gyoro Gyoro that he does not have the luxury of worrying about others due to his current state. Gyoro Gyoro then begs for his life. Tatsumaki, recognizing that Gyoro Gyoro is just a meat puppet, tells him to come out of his shell and apologize. Gyoro Gyoro then raises all the eyes that Tatsumaki had ripped out and fires several beams of psychic energy. This is easily deflected, although Tatsumaki does state that it was an elegant and nuanced use of her psychic ability, and asks who taught him how to do it. The real body is then ripped out of the meat puppet, and Tatsumaki recognizes her as a friend of Fubuki. At the same time, Fubuki, Bang, and Bomb are seen walking along a hallway when Fubuki suddenly stops, feeling her sister Tatsumaki using a tremendous amount of her psychic powers. She also states that it's very rare that she would have to exert herself to such an extent, leading Bang and Bomb to state that they may have to be more vigilant regarding the strength of the monsters they face. King is wandering around the hallways of the Monster Association alone after splitting up from Bang, Bomb, and Fubuki. He then hears someone calling his name, which startles him. He turns around and realizes it's the hostage, Waganma. He says that a monster is chasing him and tells King to finish it off and carry him to the exit. He then asks to hug King, but when he's about to do so, the King engine starts beating and King tells him to find another hero. 
stating no matter how sweet and cute Waganma acts, King can't protect him. At this point, Waganma is revealed to be a shape-shifting monster who, interpreting King's words as its cover having been blown, promptly dies of fright. King, too, notes that that was terrifying and that he needs to find Saitama. Meanwhile, Iain, Okama Itachi, and Bushy Drill are shown battered from their battle with Devil Longhair. Having cut through every strain of Devil Longhair's locks, he collapses, commenting that it was his Achilles' heel. Surprised by their victory, the disciples comment that they would not have won individually and worry that more monsters of that level may exist. Atomic Samurai is cutting down several monsters when a sword-wielding monster, Sword Devil Executioner, praises Atomic's skill. Surprised a monster survived his slash, Atomic Samurai cuts his opponent down before the monster knows what happened. Atomic asks any monster not yet dead to raise their hand. G5 raises his mechanical arm and says that he has analyzed all of Atomic's moves and they begin a high-speed sword duel. Atomic comments that modern-day toys have become interesting and says that he'd like to buy one, prompting G5 to increase his speed. G5 confidently proclaims that he will beat Atomic in 23 moves, but fails to do so. Atomic slices his foe into hundreds of pieces, but says he didn't cut the core of the machine god as it was a harder material. A laser beam shoots from the cloud of smoke, but Atomic deflects it and sends an air blade of his own to counter. As the air blade penetrates the smoke, Atomic realizes that the real opponent has escaped, saying he'll leave it to the surface team of heroes. The scene changes to Child Emperor and Waganma, who are nearing an exit of the Monster Association HQ. Waganma asks Child Emperor to escort him all the way back to his father, but Child Emperor states that the surface team will perform the task as he wants to return to the battles below. Terio is being chased by Black Sperm when a slash from Atomic Samurai stops the monster, forcing him to dodge. Through the communication device, Child Emperor notifies the other heroes that he has rejoined the surface team and that the hostage rescue mission is successful. He then realizes there's no response coming from the communication device and asks if anyone can hear him, but there's still no response. Worried if anyone received the message, Child Emperor then asks Sekengar if he explained to everyone how to use their devices. Sekengar then just says to give the heroes some time, thinking they probably can't answer as they're in battle. As he finishes speaking, there's a response from the communication device from Zombie Man who praises Child Emperor for a job well done. Child Emperor is happy that Zombie Man responded, and at that moment, Sweet Mask responds as well, saying that he will continue to carry out justice. The next hero is Pig God, who, while digesting something, also praises Child Emperor and notes that nothing's out of the ordinary. The final voice that's heard is Atomic Samurai. He's confused as to how to use the communication device. He explains that he found a kid inside the base, much to Child Emperor's surprise. Child Emperor tries asking Atomic Samurai to describe the kid, but he is unable to as the transmission cuts off. Child Emperor then turns menacingly to a scared Waganma, asking if he had known all along that the monsters have captured other hostages. Waganma starts to cry, telling them that he wanted to be rescued and that he's sorry. Child Emperor then grabs his backpack, saying he has to go, and leaves Waganma to the other heroes. Second Guard tries talking Child Emperor out of going back, pointing out the hero is exhausted and that their priority of rescuing Waganma has been completed. The other heroes try to offer their assistance, but Child Emperor turns them down, stating that they should all stick to their assigned tasks. Needlestar thinks to himself in awe about S-Class heroes, reluctantly acknowledging the gap between them and the rest of the heroes. Black Sperm gets angry at Atomic Samurai because Atomic Samurai attacked him without warning. Atomic Samurai then gets cocky and says he had no business with him, and Black Sperm grows an enormous muscular arm and asks if he's looking down on him. Atomic Samurai answers this question with a yes before swiftly cutting the arm and mentioning that he's fought countless battles with similar bastards who can transform and shapeshift into giants and that he's used to these opponents. A second Black Sperm then appears from what was once the cut arm behind Atomic Samurai, and Atomic Samurai gets annoyed. Black Sperm then asks Atomic Samurai if he still thinks he has a chance to win, noting that he's a countless number of Black Sperm merged into one entity, and saying that no matter how many times he's killed, he'll keep multiplying. As the pieces begin to quickly surround Atomic Samurai and regrow into new selves, Atomic Samurai just slashes them again. However, they just reappear in even larger numbers, jumping on him and getting slashed into more pieces until eventually, Atomic Samurai finds himself faced with a massive number of Black Sperm clones, surrounding him in every direction, as Black Sperm tells him that he has already lost the fight and is going to die. The Black Sperm clones then begin to gain the upper hand on Atomic Samurai, who is shocked to learn the monster's strength is not diminished at all, even after splitting into numerous copies. Outnumbered and surrounded, Atomic Samurai realizes that he has underestimated his opponent and begins to withdraw from battle after getting overwhelmed. He manages to create some distance between him and the swarm of clones by carving a hole in the ground directly beneath him and entering freefall, with the Black Sperm clones following suit, mocking him. However, one of the clones is destroyed by an attack in their pursuit. What was to them an escape was the hero's attempts at drawing them into a closed space for him to attempt a type of attack that can deal with enemies with powerful regenerative abilities a focused atomic slash capable of destroying monsters with the ability to regenerate. 
Having used the rest of the free fall to destroy the pursuing clones with his new technique, Atomic Samurai finally hits the ground, remarking that his enemy was tough enough to force him to use his new technique. He then remembers that the monster had been chasing a child just before their battle and makes his way back up, only to be caught off guard by an enormous black sperm ready to attack. The monster says that the clones Atomic Samurai had killed were but a fraction of his total being, having hidden his true form from the very beginning. Atomic Samurai barely manages to counterattack the enlarged monster, getting hit in the process. His slash only results in more black sperm clones emerging, which continue to taunt the injured hero, telling him that he is the worst possible matchup formulated by Gyoro Gyoro. Heavily injured and out of options, Atomic Samurai quickly cuts at the roof, resulting in the ceiling collapsing on all of them. The ensuing collapse results in powerful vibrations felt by Zombie Man, who expresses concern over how the battle may be going for other heroes. Without warning, Homeless Emperor appears behind him and blasts him point blank with a beam of energy. Homeless Emperor then expresses disappointment over how quick Zombie Man was killed, before going on to state that he will kill all 17 S-Class heroes alone. A regenerated Zombie Man then lunges at him with an axe, only to be shot in the head with a concentrated energy blast. His opponent disabled, Homeless Emperor stares at his decapitated body. A sudden gunshot coming from his upper body. Homeless Emperor unflinchingly counters the attack while Zombie Man is blown away and crashes into a wall, questioning how he'd be able to react to such a shot at close range. Dismayed at how his hidden ace had failed, Zombie Man regenerates and removes the pistol stored within his body, firing several shots at his opponent. The Homeless Emperor counters with several orbs of energy, sending them all toward the hero, resulting in a large-scale explosion. As the smoke clears, Zombie Man's charred body stands before the Homeless Emperor, who compliments him. Zombie Man asks Homeless Emperor what he is, partially because he has no idea how his attacks worked, but mainly as a way to buy time for his body to regenerate. Homeless Emperor says that until a month ago, he was living at the park. He had lost his job, gotten kicked out by his landlord, distanced himself from human society, and began living as a hermit. He recalls being forced to dance naked in front of his boss at the new employee welcoming party, only to get fired the next day for sexual harassment. But when he stared at the sky, the resentment he felt towards his boss and other such things no longer seemed to matter. For him, the earth was greater than any man-made structure, and the sky brighter than any man-made light. Humanity was an insignificant existence on the great earth. The homeless emperor saw his true home as the earth itself, which was grander than any mansion. Then one day, homeless emperor had a life-changing realization. He realized that humans have abandoned the ecosystem Mother Earth built up and thrived under new self-made rules. He could no longer bear the reality of it, which left him borderline suicidal as death was the only way to return to true coexistence with Mother Earth. Right then though, an entity homeless emperor claims to be God appeared before him. God says Homeless Emperor's view on humans was correct, but he had no need to die, and says he would grant him power and that he should know what to do with it. The Homeless Emperor then says that his power is a divine power granted to him by God, and the reason he was chosen was that he knew the answer, which was that humans were a harmful existence to the planet, and the time has come for him to destroy the entirety of its existence and civilization. Zombie Man asks him why he believed the entity to be God, and if he had any identification, while thinking that the situation is bad because his body had not finished recovering before he was done talking. Homeless Emperor, knowing that Zombie Man was doubting the existence of God in his story, says there's no need for him to believe in God, and his price for his arrogance will be his death. Saitama felt Homeless Emperor wreaking havoc and worried about the integrity of his house's foundation. Sweet Mask says to himself that according to Atomic Samurai's message, there was another kid held captive. He then thinks that the battle will take longer than he had imagined, and the things he had planned in the future had to be cancelled or rescheduled. While holding a monster head that was still alive, Sweet Mask then stops and asks the monster head what was in front of them. The head says that these were devices used to nurture monster cells collected from Orochi, and they can turn humans into monsters. Sweet Mask then thinks that they should just eliminate Orochimaru to stop their production, but the monster head says that such a thing is not possible. Sweet Mask then proceeds to destroy the equipment. As he's walking away from the aftermath, something is heard laughing around the end of the hallway, excitedly saying how it found him. Sweet Mask asks the monster head who the voice belonged to, and the head, recognizing the voice, says that it is over for Sweet Mask. The monster is then seen bouncing around towards Sweet Mask, and the hero flings the monster head he was using to answer his questions at it, only for it to get kicked straight up into the ceiling. Sweet Mask says it had great movements, but he had confidence in a fist fight, only to back away once he saw the monster's face. He asks Sweet Mask why he's so scared, even though he came knowing it was the Monster Association HQ. He then recognizes the hero in front of him as Sweet Mask and says that he's going to kill him. He then says that he's going to carve the reality that looks and battle stats do not go hand in hand and threatens to use Sweet Mask's face to do so. His name is revealed as Fuhrer Ugly and his disaster level is Dragon. Sweet Mask thinks that without a doubt, the guy is some type of Ugmon. Sweet Mask realizes the battle is unwinnable for him because when he sees extreme ugliness, he starts shaking and is no longer able to move. 
A monster watches in horror as Pig God devours his monster comrades after mistakenly thinking that the hero would have been a good feed for them. Pig God grabs the monster and puts it into his mouth as it screams desperately. Gums then sneaks up from behind Pig God and swallows the hero. Pig God struggles to escape and Gums is forced to spit him out. The two then battle. The scene then shifts to a monster limping away from the disciples of Atomic Samurai after being wounded, who mentions unleashing something. Iain, Bushy Drill, and Okama Itachi are walking down a corridor when Bushy Drill notices a dangerous aura coming from a room they're near and asks if the others can sense it too. As they enter the room, they see a water tank with fish in it. The monster then informs them that even Gyoro Gyoro had difficulty controlling the thing in the tank and adds that it was a cadre before recklessly pushing the tank over and unleashing evil natural water. The fish inside the water immediately eat away at the monster and they're revealed to be Mad Doctor Fish. The monster desperately tries to reason with them, but the water swallows it up and the fish turn him into bones, while the three swordsmen watch in shock. Mad Dr. Fish attacks Iain, who swiftly cuts them down. Iain notes that although the fish were no problem, the situation is hopeless because they had no way to cut evil natural water. Puri Puri Prisoner continues his search for Nyan as he swims through the underground walls of the Monster Association base. He ends up in a small chamber filled with torture equipment and notices Gero chained to the wall, seemingly unconscious. Not recognizing Gero as the infamous hero hunter, Puri Puri Prisoner thinks he's simply another human hostage and moves to release him. However, just as Puri Puri Prisoner recognizes Gero's face, Gero awakens and breaks the chains before swiftly pummeling the hero. The S-Class hero quickly understands the grave mistake he made by awakening the mysterious prisoner. Elsewhere, Saitama continues to wander through the Monster Association base as he searches for someone to talk to about all the noise under his apartment. He's ambushed by a monster and swiftly kills it with one punch. Around the next corner, Flashy Flash lies in wait. He gauges Saitama's size and deduces that he must be a monster, so he dashes around the corner and slashes at his target. However, Saitama easily dodges. Flashy Flash is shocked to recognize Saitama as the B-Class hero who once accompanied Genos to an S-Class meeting. Enraged that he dodged his surprise attack, Flash performs his special Flashy Slash move on Saitama, who simply catches the sword with one hand. Unamused, Saitama accuses Flash of being a monster for attacking him, so he quickly clarifies that he's a hero too. Flash explains that they're in the Monster Association's territory and tells him he should find shelter. Flash also tells him of the assistance of the Monster King Orochi, exciting Saitama as he doesn't realize he already killed him earlier. Annoyed by Saitama's persistence to stick around, Flash runs off at high speeds to abandon him but is shocked when Saitama can easily keep up. As they run, Saitama notices how he's seeing the same monster corpse in section of the halls again and again. Saitama asks Flashy Flash if he's lost, only to be ignored by the annoyed ninja. Outside, multiple A and B class heroes are battling monsters to keep Waganma safe from the Monster Association. As the battle dies down and the monsters are eventually defeated, they seal all possible entrances for monsters to emerge. As they voice that victory may be imminent, Poison notices a monster in the distance. He orders one shotter to fire at the monster, only for the bullet to be intercepted by Nian's claw and deflected back at the sniper, wounding his head. Nian voices his joy at coming across a weak group of heroes after meeting Saitama and insists that they play with him. Jet Nice Guy states that they must be cautious when Nian suddenly appears at the center of them and slashes, wounding him, Needle Star, Gear Spur, and Twin Tail. Nian announces that he is a cadre of the Monster Association while muttering to himself that he's left it already to the shock of the heroes. He speaks about his past as a normal cat that played with toys until they broke, now free as a monster to do what he pleases. Sekengar orders food battler Futoshi to take Waganma to safety. Feather and Poison take a fighting stance as Nian eerily grins stating that the theme of this game is to rip Waganma apart while the group watches. Mizuki takes her medal, transforms it into a discus, and prepares to launch it at Nyan. while Green restrains the monster with his vines. Nyan, with his great speed, catches the disc in his teeth and shatters it. Poison tries to attack Nyan's face, but his blade is stopped by the Kadra's eyelid and promptly broken as well. As Feather and Shadow Ring try to attack the creature, Nyan slips out of the vines and shatters their blades instantly. Before the heroes could register what happened, they are severely wounded. As the remaining heroes stare in shock and devastation, Nyan eyes a terrified Waganma and wonders where they're heading. Seeing the creature staring at him, Waganma orders food battler Futoshi to stop eating and speed up, only to be informed that he must eat to replenish his energy supply. Mizuki attempts to stop Nyan from pursuing Waganma and food battler, but the creature strikes Mizuki into the air. Gear Spur cushions her fall with his awakened psychic powers and uses his remaining power to launch an attack at Nyan. He breaks multiple nearby buildings apart, forms the rubble into sharp projectiles, and throws them at the monster, burying it. After the extreme attack, Gearspur's helmet breaks and he collapses. Waganma gloats about the apparent victory of the heroes. However, Nyan uses his supernatural dexterity to escape the pile of rubble and quickly slashes food battler Futoshi's stomach. The monster tells Waganma that his disaster level is Dragon, terrifying the child so much that he wets his pants. Nyan drags the two away so he can kill Waganma in front of the other heroes. Suddenly, a high-speed projectile breaks the monster's hold on Futoshi and Waganma. 
the projectile circles back and appears at the hands of Drive Knight. Waganma and food battler Futoshi run for safety while Sekengar watches from a distance, thankful for the arrival of the S-Class hero. Drive Knight uses tactical transformation chariot and lunges at Nyan. The hero circles around the monster and sprays an anesthetic gas in an attempt to immobilize Nyan. He then charges Nyan with his bike, but the monster dodges through a crack in the ground. Drive Knight releases a strong solvent into the ground that forces Nyan back to the surface. The hero launches several missiles at Nyan, which the monster easily dodges. Nyan goes for a direct attack, but Drive Knight uses Tactical Transformation Knight and kicks the monster into the air. He then uses Tactical Transformation Flying Chariot to propel himself above Nyan and then transforms into Bishop and punches Nyan into the ground. Nyan slips into Drive Knight's suit and slices it apart using Feline Retribution. Drive Knight then uses Tactical Transformation Gold. Nyan unleashes Flying Slashes at him, but the hero is unharmed due to the strength and armor provided by the transformation. Nyan slips into Drive Knight's body and attacks the hero from unpredictable angles. As Nyan is about to unleash Feline Retribution in the hero's body, Drive Knight raises his temperature to an extreme level and forces the monster out. He holds Nyan in a chokehold and uses Silver to stab the monster in the torso from behind. Drive Knight then incinerates Nyan. Sekengar marvels at the strength of Drive Knight after witnessing his battle. He questions Drive Knight's actions, but the hero excuses the questioning and displays intel on the monster association. He tells Sekengar that Bofoy is a traitor to the hero association, sowing seeds of doubt in his head. The executive phones the Hero Association to warn them of Bofoy, but G5 appears and shoots his hand. Before the robot can strike second guard, Janos appears out of the sky and stomps it, causing G5 to explode. He then inquires about the situation. Janos takes the support team and Waganma to an area guarded by the Hero Association, defeating several monsters along the way. While the other support heroes are being treated for their injuries, second guard starts tending to his wound and calls Sitch to tell the latter that Waganma has been successfully rescued. He then tosses the phone to Janos, who has a short phone conversation with Sitch. Sitch thanks the hero for his work and apologizes for leaving him out of the initial battle plan and starts to ask for a favor. In a flashback, Drive Knight takes Nyan's body away for examination. Nyan, who is revealed to still be alive, mentions someone who can defeat Monster Association executives with one punch, and Genos realizes that Saitama is fighting against the Monster Association. Genos tells Sitch that he has no intention of following any orders from the Hero Association and hangs up. Genos then entrusts Waganma in Food Battler Futoshi's care and prepares to enter the Monster Association hideout, receiving Monster Association intel provided by Drive Knight. Super Alloy Darkshine finds Puri Puri Prisoner on the ground. Puri Puri Prisoner warns Darkshine about Gero, who appears at the end of the corridor. Darkshine and Gero face off. Child Emperor finds Atomic Samurai's disciples defeated by Evil Natural Water. He dodges the monster's attacks and assembles his Snowman robot. Evil Natural Water shoots jet streams at Child Emperor, but the hero counters using his robot's flash freezing breath to freeze the monster's attacks. Child Emperor continues fighting Evil Natural Water. Sludge Jellyfish enters the room and offers to assist Evil Natural Water, but the monster sucks the oil out of him instead. This renders Child Emperor's freezing attack ineffective due to the oil's low freezing point. The hero is astonished by the brainless monster's ability to optimize the situation. The scene then cuts to show Genos making haste to the Monster Association headquarters. Reviewing the data Drive Knight provided to Sekengar as he does so. He notes that all of the Kadra are troublesome opponents and that there is no time to come up with any good strategies, although Saitama may have already killed them. Elsewhere, in the Monster Association base, Flashy Flash and Saitama run in circles, neither having any sense of direction. Saitama suggests contacting the other heroes, but Flashy Flash comments that the other S-Class heroes are competent. A narrator explains that the S-Class was created to group heroes that were consistently capable of defeating monsters with disaster-level demon. All the S-Class are overwhelmed on the brink of death thanks to Gyoro Gyoro's analysis matchups. Tatsumaki locates Gyoro Gyoro's real body and begins pulling her out while the villain wonders which executive is free to come save her. She thinks of Overgrown Rover, but the dog is revealed to have engaged in combat with Bang, Bomb, and Fubuki. Bang, Bomb, and Fubuki fight off Rover. Fubuki shields the martial artists from one of the executive's blasts and uses her psychic powers to improve their physical attributes. Bang and Bomb finish their combination attack on Overgrown Rover, while Fubuki sits there amazed by both of them. But she is especially amazed by Bomb, who she previously thought was just a normal old man, and tries to recruit him into her group, but is interrupted by Rover who gets up uninjured and lively after Bang and Bomb's combination attack. In frustration, Bang asks the dog to sit and behave, and to their surprise, the monster obliges and they quickly pass. Meanwhile, Flashy Flash and Saitama are riding around in a minecart trying to get to the Monster King's lair, led by a monster who plans to drop the cart and take them to their deaths at a switching point. But after seeing how far the drop is, the monster is too scared and doesn't do it. Saitama, Flashy Flash, and the Toilet Monster roll through an excavation site in the Monster Association HQ. The minor monsters attack the heroes and Flashy and Saitama quickly kill them. Some gold but accidentally drops it while trying to save their tour guide. 
Psycho strings a mysterious elixir to fight Tatsumaki, and after emitting a loud shout, declares that she's much stronger than Gyoro Gyoro. Gero fights Super Alloy Darkshine, but is overpowered and knocked back. He regains consciousness from his battle with Monster King Orochi after being punched, and challenges Darkshine's as well as the entire Hero Society's way of thinking. Darkshine unleashes a devastating tackle that pierces through Gero's guard with ease and sends him back through multiple layers of the Monster Association HQ. Gero's ribs are shattered by this blow, but he soon recovers. He uses Water Stream Rock Smashing Fist and Whirlwind Iron Cutting Fist to start an onslaught that makes the indestructible hero consider the possibility of defeat. Darkshine then uses his full power to punch Gero with Super Alloy Bazooka, but Gero meets his fist with a blow of his own. The narrator comments that Gero's limiter seems to be breaking. Meanwhile, Saitama stresses over his damaged cape as Flashy Flash gives him a lecture on his skills. On the surface, Genos worries that Saitama's clothes may have been damaged. Psychos and Tatsumaki continue their battle. Tatsumaki grabs Psychos with a psychic restraint and pulls her up. Psychos, in return, grabs Tatsumaki and pulls her down, and the two rocket toward each other. Psychos smashes through the floor where Saitama, Flashy Flash, and the unnamed minecart monster are riding and collides with Tatsumaki. Tatsumaki then asks Psychos about the location of the other kid they were looking for. Somewhere else in the Monster Association base, Terio finds King and runs to him in relief. King immediately shouts for Terio to stop, mistakenly believing that this boy is another shape-shifting monster in disguise and calls him out for it. An invisible monster behind Terio suddenly reveals himself and flees, thinking that King had seen through his invisibility. King holds Terio's hand and they walk off. The invisible monster runs down a corridor. Suddenly, a slime grabs him and smothers him. This slime is the heart of Orochi, who is now absorbing monster's blood to revive himself. Orochi senses Psychos and Tatsumaki battling nearby and reaches towards them. Psychos continues her assault on Tatsumaki, but the hero effortlessly overpowers her. Tatsumaki forces the information she needs out of Psychos and then calls the other heroes with their locator. The only hero who responds is Sweet Mask, who reports his current situation. They bicker. Suddenly, Orochi, who had regenerated enough of his body to have dragon heads scattered around the opening in the base, blasts Tatsumaki and Psychos from all directions. The blasts catch the hero by surprise, tearing her sleeves, scuffing her, and releasing her grip on Psychos. Psychos laughs maniacally and flies down toward Orochi to take his energy. Orochi attempts to seize control over Psychos' body, but she manages to resist Orochi's invasion, which results in a fusion between the two entities. Psychos focuses on fighting Tatsumaki while Orochi chases after Saitama. Psychos' newfound power gives her the upper hand over Tatsumaki as she uses Tatsumaki's strength against her. Fortunately for Tatsumaki, Saitama erupts a multitude of Orochi's cells, releasing Tatsumaki from Psychos' control. King informs Tatsumaki that he has secured the other child, allowing Tatsumaki to go all out. Gero continues his beatdown on Super Alloy Darkshine. He slips past a punch from Darkshine and delivers a strike that forces the hero to cough up blood. Gero taunts Darkshine, who looks at him in fear. The narration recounts Darkshine's past. When he was a child, he was a frail weakling, unable to participate in sports and other physical activities. His frailty left him unable to build self-confidence. On his 15th birthday, his parents gave him a set of 3 kilogram dumbbells. He lifted every day, gradually increasing his weight until the amount he could lift was immeasurable. Progress built up his confidence. He eventually joined up the Hero Association and continued his search for an opponent that could push him to his limit. As Gero continues his assault, Darkshine realizes he was never looking for a real fight. Rather, he sought a fight that could give him a satisfying victory. The instant the thought of injury flashes through Darkshine's head, the fear he had long forgotten begins to grow and overwhelm him. He lashes out in despair. Gero pins him to the ground and pulls back when Darkshine yelps in fear. Gero judges his assault to be akin to bullying, a pathetic evil compared to what he aims to become. Suddenly, Gero's joints start to crack, and the cloth strips stuck to his body crawl towards his face. A psychic barrier surrounds Darkshine and pulls him up as the ceiling collapses, leaving Gero on the ground amidst the falling rubble. Darkshine, rising higher, tells Gero to run. As he loses sight of Gero, he hangs his head in shame. Tatsumaki rips out the Monster Association headquarters to the surface. The fusion of Psychos and Orochi swiftly emerges in pursuit of her. Metal Bat decides to participate in the fight with the Monster Association despite his injuries. Meanwhile, Moomin Rider and Tank Top Master decide to assist civilians surrounding the battle. The Tank Topper army chase after Tank Top Master after Tank Top Doctor reveals the subliminal messaging derived from Tank Top Master's Tank Top. The Blizzard group accompanies the Tank Topper army. The injured martial artists in the hospitals watch as the heroes depart. Meanwhile, the two psychic titans face off far above the surface. Psychos makes fun of Tatsumaki's display of ripping the Monster Association headquarters out of the ground. Tatsumaki ignores it, noticing that the Psychos and Orochi fusion is drawing energy from its root-like tendrils and believes that if she cuts off the top of the tower, she can considerably weaken Psychos' power. Psychos replies with a terrifically large attack. 
cutting into the very crust of the Earth and lifting an enormous portion of the surface of the planet far into the sky. Oceans of water pour from the lifted crust and cause an incredible tsunami that seems to surpass mountains in height. Tatsumaki gets caught in the devastating blast but manages to reappear mostly unscathed. Psychos revels in her new power, while Tatsumaki struggles to comprehend how she attained it. Genos witnesses the display from the ground and is even more bewildered. Psychos' excitement wanes, and she begins to explain the true source of the fusion's power. Amid the fusion, while Psychos and Orochi battled for dominance, a mysterious entity seemed to appear before them. Psychos remarked that it was something like God. Power flowed into her, and she became privy to her destiny. Her new powers allow her to absorb the energy of every living thing. Psycho now considering herself a perfect life form, something Tatsumaki scoffs at. Psychos continues and explains that this was the fate of everything from the very beginning. Tatsumaki denies this and Psychos becomes angered, beginning her attack. As Genos rescues and brings a half-dead Tank Top Master to a safe area where Bomb and Fubuki are, Genos leaves Tank Top Master to Fubuki's care before going back to help the other heroes. Meanwhile, Bomb and Fubuki are shocked to see the severe injuries Tank Top Master has taken. Both Fubuki and Bomb manage to heal him a little bit using the former's telekinesis powers but are left exhausted afterward. Suddenly, Gero emerges from the ground looking completely different and monstrous. Bomb and Fubuki are surprised at the appearance of the hero hunter. Bomb immediately calls out for Bang, who with the help of Atomic Samurai, the Council of Swordmasters, and other heroes is engaging in battle with Black Sperm. Atomic Samurai tells Bang to leave and deal with Gero as his master, with Bang expressing his gratitude to the fellow S-Class shortly before parting. Afterward, Garo appears, having become immensely powerful from his many battles, and evolved into a borderline monster himself. Garo incapacitates several S-Class heroes and dragon-level monsters before taunting the heroes who were unable to fight, threatening that he will kill the child he had once saved from being bullied. At this point, Saitama approaches him with the complaint that he's being a disruptive neighbor. He states that he is going to beat some sense into Garo, who attacks with the thought that Saitama cannot withstand the attack. The result is that Garo is hit with a punch that sends him skipping across the ground. Gero utilizes his martial arts prowess to briefly appear to be overtaking Saitama, but Saitama grows bored and tells Gero to truly fight all out, demonstrating how serious he can be by flipping the entire Monster Association HQ once again. In the debris, Gero becomes disoriented and is beaten badly by Saitama. After a long spiel about his philosophy, Gero demands that Saitama explains why he's a hero. Saitama's simple answer irritates him into yelling more, and Saitama shatters the remaining monster mutation left on Gero in frustration. He states that Gero had an ideal image of a hero in his mind the entire time, and suggests that Gero wanted to be a hero all along but chose to become a monster that simply had to kill every hero and unite the world against him. The heroes attempt to kill Gero, but Saitama stalls them and Bang attempts to punish Gero. After the child Gero saved intervenes, Gero becomes filled with a desire to live on and flees the scene. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Peace.